Everything from overlanding in your stock rig to full-on LS-powered to buggies on stickies. This is the Total Off-Road Podcast. I'm your host, Steve. And I'm Ian, and we are here for episode number 44. And I'm going to say this is going to be the best episode to date. Hmm. You know how I know that? Because. Both of us went wheeling. And. What? We drove them both on the trailer. <laughs> yes, they both drove on the trailer under their own power. Yes. Mine went back on the trailer the same as it came off. It's like literally nothing changed to my knowledge. Yes. Except for leaky axle seal. Yeah, but like lets you know that fluid's still in there. So <laughs> yeah, Thanks and all of the race lines. Hey. Hey. Clean them up. Welcome back to uh, the Total Off Road Podcast. For another awesome episode, as you know, as you've heard, where we went wheeling, it is awesome. Uh, as we get into things, I want to announce that we have a new patron. Thank you, Jeremy Kirshner, for jumping on. We appreciate it. And that is putting us right up against the one hundo. Winning. Winning is correct. That's all I have. That's all you have? I was just like, <laughs> I was like, winning. And I'm like, yep, cool. Yep. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. No, it, it shows is you that people give a shit about what you do. So that we're completely transparent about the Patreon and what we're doing with that. Um, now that the monthly funds are covered, everything going forward from that is going to go towards giveaways. <gasps> the merch table over there. Well, the giveaway table, I guess now. because The, the merch mer- table is empty. All the merch is <laughs> damn near done sold you out. You sold the merch. I know it. <laughs> I'm going to open a merch window next time. It's going to be like you just walk up to the window and like, hey, what you going to get you? Get I'll tell merch. you what, merch was flying off the shelves from every trailer this weekend. We had trailer sales. We had oh truck my bed gosh. sales. It we was had, getting crazy. There was guys crawler. on picnic tables selling shit. Yeah, it was crawler nuts. was dealing and, yep. and Wolfie Fabworks was down there, like Wolf, Wolf Fabworks and Wolfie Creations, both. They were tag team, just it. throwing shirts out. Who else? Complete off road. Complete off road was slinging, de- was slinging stickers around. Slinging stickers around. Yep. Business cards. Yep. Makes was, me need business cards now. Like, do we yeah. need business cards? I don't know, but Chris was flinging business cards. I think so. Chris would have brought more stuff if he had known that it was going to be like that swag fest. Yeah, swag fest. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been a good name for it. Maybe we're going to start an eight and we'll have swag a swag fest. run. That'd be cool. But anyway, yeah, that was awesome to see everybody getting getting a little bit of merch from, from everywhere they needed it. So that was cool. Like to have an event where you don't like have vendors, but yet you have vendors. We have vendors. <laughs> we're going to need the cut of the sales <laughs> sent to our PayPal address. Yeah, just go ahead and get on there. So thank you for your <laughs> donation. Yeah, you didn't know it was a charitable donation, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was a merch cut. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so that's what, uh, that's, what's going on. So those of you that are in the Patreon, the Patreon, uh, thank you. And if you're interested in Patreon, you can jump on at any amount. You don't need to meet some kind of dollar tier. We don't have any tiers set up. So right now, if you jump in, um, even if it's just at a dollar, you're going to get the Patreon stuff, the extra content up until we create tiers. We're working on that, but we're not there yet. We just went wheeling for the first time together, so I don't really know what more y'all expect. You're right. We're baby stepping. Baby steps. Um, Before we get too far into talking about our trail riders weekend, mm-hmm. we can finally announce. What? Because oh. it's now official. Yes. We official. are partnered with the Outlaw Off-Road Racing Series for the 2021 season. So we are continuing our sponsorship of the race series. They are continuing to race. Gee, many Christmas. Get her right. And take two. They are continuing <laughs> the uh, partnership with us. We are continuing our partnership with them. We will be. I, it is my goal next year to be at every race. Every race. Yeah, oh, Ooh. I think five of them. It's a healthy. That's a healthy goal. Yeah, it is. Like five is not bad. I well, guess. I'm going to Mid America. Yep, that's the they have announced their finals is definitely at Mid America on Labor Day weekend. So okay, um, I also can tell you that the game plan is Marchish for Mid America Power Sports to be open on the property doing rentals of side sides. So you should literally have no excuse because you can take your wife's car, rent a cabin, rent a side by side, wheel, drink beer, watch outlaw racing. 
Like, I don't know. What else do I need to say there? Right. Free beer all weekend. You think we could work something out with them and get a discount code going for our listeners? What? On free beer? If you rent a cabin and a side-by-side? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> when I get a deal, y'all T- get a deal. T-O-P-10. <laughs> <laughs> you get uh, 10% added to your charge for the damage <laughs> fee that we're going to incur by calling you out to go, <laughs> go up the bounty hill. <laughs> Yes. Send it. Send it. No balls. <laughs> um, what was that thing you said? I can't Send say it. It's beer. it's <laughs> beep, 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 beep. If you don't. <laughs> uh, if you were on the Patreon account, you would hear what my new saying is. But uh, we will clean this podcast up and not say it. So I can tell you that Mid-America, we're going to be at there at Labor Day. That's for sure. The wife's already on board with that. Nice. But uh, yeah. All five races. I believe it's going to be five. Mm-hmm. The schedule's coming out officially soon, so stay tuned. My kid will be like a year and five months by then. Yeah. Is that my four month? Year and five months? Might be able to swing that then. Take him with me. Dude, that park God, is crazy. so friendly mm-hmm. to families. Like, yeah. I encourage you to bring your wife and kids yeah. to that park for that event. Like, make zero, absolutely zero mistake. That that event is for you and you only. Like that yeah. is not. I mean, it could it's be for family a buddy's family. trip, a, a dude's weekend. Right. But like, I encourage you to not make it that because if your wife is included, if your kids are included, you're gonna go. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. Like, yeah. if you say, "Hey, let's family vacation down here." So what you're telling me is, if it is a guy's weekend, you're not gonna be picking up many chicks. D- I, it's all, they're all married off with children. All I did was sit around <laughs> a pool and drink free beer with a bunch of dudes. I don't understand how that's possible. Like, I'm just here to tell you. I still just don't understand this concept of being able to have free beer at an off. You just have to come down there and check it out with me next My year. My mind is blown. I wonder if they'll have the trail opened up yet to Disney. Might be. Oh, that'd be awesome. Never know. We could do that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. But yeah, anyway, make that a family trip. Labor Day weekend. Do it to it. Come wheeling, rent a side by side. Chop, chop. Bring your buggy. It's like 60 bucks a person to get in for the whole week. Really? Weekend. The whole thing. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I think uh, early check-in, they opened up early check-in for us so you could get in Thursday. So you literally had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for 60 bucks. Yeah. Like. With for all the beer you can drink. So, um, let's break this down. We're going to, let's move. Segue. Slide. Over. Slide. Let's break this down. How'd your Friday go? Sucked ass. Not come. Because those fucking sucked. Um, you don't hear about my Friday? My <sighs> Friday did not suck. Well, should we start with the good or start with the bad? <laughs> I'm going to start with the good. Okay, go ahead. My Friday didn't suck. Let's hear it. Friday. So, let's see. Thursday, I worked on Loki mm-hmm. getting stuff done. I don't remember what I did Thursday. Oh, feels, Thursday. It feels I, like a week ago, man. <laughs> yes. Four or five days ago. Yeah. I was like, that feels like a week. Um, feels like a month. Thursday, I plumbed the lockers and I was up till... We hours in the morning getting the lockers plumbed on the Jeep. So I got that all done. Everything was plumbed to the interior. So I had the lockers all plumbed. I got the uh, compressor put inside the fuel tank like area. I got all that at the tank mounted. Everything there was going good, but mm-hmm. I wasn't quite done hooking everything up. I still needed to wire all the switches to the valves and that sort of thing. And then uh, here's a few of the things I had to get. Uh, I had to get the alternator put on. I had to, um, what else was there in the interior? Oh, I needed to do a new electric fan still on third. Like I had to do that. Still. Like put it in and wire it on Friday. It was already wired. Okay. Like everything was good. It's just a simple drop in, but the fan was not an exact fit for my application. Apparently hmm. it was close, but not quite. Okay. I had to do some modifications to the header panel and stuff like that to, to, uh, or like the radiator support top piece. Anyway. Uh, I did all that Friday morning, and then I took the alternator core with me back to Napa so I could retrieve some new, some different parts. And I had to go to Home Depot to get some different fittings because I went a different route on my plumbing. And then I had to go. How's Home Depot's fittings? I'm, talking, I'm um, assuming you're talking like brass fittings. Yeah, brass fittings. Not bad. I don't. I didn't go to Menards to see if there's any better. See, like when you're at Napa, and Napa's in Home Depot parking lot here. Menards is the best, right? Lowe's I think so. Is the second. And then Home Depot just trails off. Yep. 
I, have, they I have go what to Lowe's because it's closer, but yeah, for you, Menards is the best selection yeah. of I think you're sizes. Right. Mm-hmm. And like and like styles of fittings. Yep. See, it probably would have been good, but they had everything I needed there. So, so it's a win either way. I didn't need much. Yep. So I uh, I did all that. I needed to go to Farm and Fleet and get a battery because the battery was dead. So like it would not hold a charge. I charged it for like over twelve hours. Mm-hmm. Shut the charger off. Hit the key. Dead. Little nothing. Yep. I was like, oh okay. So why would you go to Farm and Fleet for? Because that's where the battery was at, Ray. Oh. Yep. And it was a gold. Oh. So it had a warranty ish oh. ish warranty. Okay. I wouldn't call it a great warranty. I still still spent more at Farm and Fleet to get that battery than I would have spent at Rural King to just get a battery. Hmm. whatever she just got a nice one i did i mean what do you how nice do you want it i don't know i beat the fuck out of batteries i, I just don't know how you the, beat the fuck out of a battery uh put it in don't touch it for like six months in a vehicle that eats that drinks the battery juice you just need a battery shut off <laughs> yeah I know. Like they're cheap <laughs> I know. why are you one in there <laughs> or just unhook the battery it's not that hard i have a battery shut off on the <laughs> buggy and then you yeah. just literally like i don't turn it off all the time but mm-hmm. like if it sits in the garage, I just kick it off. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. No draw on the circuit. Like nothing should mm-hmm. really draw anyway, but like nothing. Mm-hmm. So that would be nice. But I, um, I do that and then I let them sit out in the wintertime mm-hmm. and then I'll go charge them back up and I'll let them do it again and I'll charge them back up, do it again and again. Mm-hmm. And I'll do that like for like two years mm-hmm. and then they just give up. You know how you solve that problem? I keep them charged. Go wheeling more often. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? One would hope. Yeah. Hopefully we're getting to that point. Well, I would like to think so. So, so Friday I'm uh I'm heading into town and I get a phone call from the old uh Chris. And uh he calls me up and he's like, Hey, what are you doing? I was like, I'm heading into town. He's like, Oh, well, we're not far away. I said, Where yet? He's like, We're uh we're at the Muhammad exit. He's like, Oh, you're getting close. Like, I'm gonna pass you. And so I get into Champagne, and sure enough, passed them on the interstate, right? They're going over that train bridge, and um, which some of you know what I'm talking about. Ian does, but it's it's a spot in town. And uh, passed on the interstate and was on the phone with him when I passed him. And then he's like, I should just get off the interstate in there and go to Ian's place and and uh, just show up at his work. I was like, well, it's exit 184, so just jump off and go. <laughs> and he did. And Yeah, and he did. <laughs> And then I ran to Napa, got all my stuff squared away there. I ran by the steel shop because I needed that top plate for my truss. Um, shout out to Curlin Steel and Donnie for hooking that up. He got that cut in one day. Quit doing that. In the Can't microphone. <laughs> I'm over here like <laughs> things let's I see need how to these do. Fingernails taste. <laughs> <laughs> Just picking on you. Um, this is my feelings are hurt. <laughs> so anyway. I uh, swung by there and it wasn't done yet. He's like, oh, they didn't take the damn sheet out with them. I'm like, all right. He's like, I'll have a cut in an hour. Cool. I'll run my errands and I'll be back. So that's what I did. Ran into town, got the stuff that I needed, all that stuff sorted out. Ran over to Farm and Fleet and Chris met me there. They were down at McDonald's down by, down closer to Crow and Steel. Uh-huh. And he's like, where are you at? I was like, I'm at Farm and Fleet. I'm going to go get a battery. He's like, okay, we'll meet you there. I was like, all right. He comes over there. Then I call... Uh, Donnie, he's like, yep, it's all done. I said, okay. And I told Chris, I was like, well, I need to go back where you just came from. But I went over there, picked that up. It was perfect. Cut exactly as I needed it at a three eighths plate, had the hole in the right spot. Like everything. Oh, was so they punched perfect. a hole in it then yep. too. Yep. Nice. They just cut the whole thing out with a plasma cutter and just done. So, and the cuts were really nice too. So he had that all done for me and Chris and Tom, Chris's buddy, headed to the house and they met me at the house and those two guys worked tirelessly for the next three hours helping me get Loki on track. So we fixed the fuel line that broke while I was trying to install my uh, alternator. Like I say broke, but like it broke the seal on the nylon to the barb fitting. Mm -hmm. And so it started leaking. That's odd. Well, it's 25 years old, so you can't blame it. But I just touched, I barely touched it to get a wrench in between the two lines to get down to the alternator bolt or the uh, power string pump bolt so you could loosen it up for the tensioner. And when I did that, it just started leaking. I was like, well, that's convenient. And then I fired the Jeep up, it just started dripping. I was like, yeah, that's not going to work out. So Chris, uh, Chris went ahead when I got, when we got back over there and with all the parts and everything, Chris jumped on and fixed that line and uh, strung it up. And then I threw a battery in there. 
And then we started working on the, um, the relay setup, running all the wires, getting the switches all wired up. Those two guys back there, they worked on that. We had a bunch of plumbing leaks. I like, I put everything together with pipe dope mm-hmm. instead of, I used like the, the liquid stuff instead of the tape. Yep. I don't know. I wasn't impressed. So here's my two cents on this from a semi half-assed professional opinion. Mm -hmm. Somebody that does it more than me. I love tape. Love the paste style. Really? Teflon. In a bottle. Tape. It's in a squeeze tube. The stuff we have at work. It's like a squeeze Mm -hmm. tube. Um, Love it. Hmm. Cause you don't have to fuck with tape. You don't mm-hmm. have to wrap it the right direction. How you much just, do you put on there? I put uh, copious enough. amounts. Yeah. Hmm. I will say I do genuinely believe that the tape seals better. Mm-hmm. And I do genuinely believe that 70% of the time mm-hmm. the like liquid paste stuff mm-hmm. works, mm-hmm. but I have had more than a few occasions this, where yeah. it just leaks. The and stuff then you that put you, tape on and it doesn't right, leak. Yeah. And you're like, I didn't fucking do anything. It's but, tight in the same. Yep. It's the same fitting. I, but the tape takes up more room. Yeah. yeah. And that um, pipe thread uses the threads to seal. So the, it's like, yeah. yeah, you know. The uh, the paste stuff that you use, is it hardening or not hardening? I don't. I mean, it gets crusty, but, but it not really hard. sets. Yeah. 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 That's what the stuff I got was non-setting mm-hmm. and had PTFE in, within it or whatever. Um. I don't know. And then the biggest problem I had was the the distribution block that I decided to use was one that I bought for some train horns. Okay. And it's aluminum. Okay. So I don't think that it was high quality. Okay. Like it's just aluminum tapped and anodized. I think it was just Chinese. Cheap, yeah. yeah. Just wasn't high quality. I think a brass one probably would have sealed up pretty good. But yep. uh but being aluminum, it just we fought it and fought it and fought it and fought it. It still has leaks. Small leaks. The compressor kicks on that little half gallon tank. It's got an 85 kick on and a 100 or 105 shut off. And it kicks on once every 35 or 40 minutes. It's not bad. No, it's a really small leak. Uh-huh. And uh, until you hit the rear locker switch. Uh-huh. And we'll get to that. But anyway, Chris and Tom worked tirelessly to get all that plumbed up, all that wired up and everything back there. They got all that fixed. Took care of the leaks while I was working on some other stuff up front, getting the switches wired. And when they left at 4.35 o'clock to head towards the Badlands, the Jeep was all but ready to pull out of the garage. Oh. Yep. So without them, I have to thank those two guys a lot. Because without them, I don't know when I would have got to the Badlands. Later than you did. Ethan, I got later and I got there late to begin with. Yes. Well, okay. So here's okay. Well, moving moving forward. Moving right along. After they left, uh things that still need to be done to the Jeep were well the top plate on the truss. Uh-huh. And um what else was it? The Jeep still needed a few little things tight like fixed or done to it. But that was one of the biggest things. And on top of that, I still need to go get a truck and trailer. Uh-huh. So Jess got home, told her, she's like, all right, we'll just go. You should probably go do that soon then. So I took off and went and got the truck and trailer, got back. It was like eight, eight, eight thirty. Uh-huh. Um, and then I was like, look, I'm going to take the Jeep and go do that. Do that top plate. I was like, I just don't feel comfortable wheeling the 44 on forties without having a complete truss. Uh-huh. So I jumped in the Jeep and I've never, I've never driven this thing like, on the road road yet. And I was like, well, we're going to find out. Got to do it first sometime. Yeah, it's got no plates. Don't need it. Has insurance. Nah. That's the important Fuck thing. It. That's the important thing. Insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, the state of Illinois begs to differ, <laughs> but. Well, probably. To each their own. You know? <laughs> so I, uh, I jumped in it and I grabbed all my tools and everything that I needed. And I took off to the shop. And. Got everything cut off. Got the, uh, there was some little bit of the remainder of the, um, of the original top plate that I had on there was still on there. So I cut that back to where the truss edge of the truss was at, mm-hmm. prepped it, uh, wrapped all of the bougie blue and tape and to make sure it doesn't get, I got to like, cover all the, well, yeah. Cause like you just painted it all. Like, you don't want sparks and yep. welding and everything else on it. Cover that all in tape, cover the top of the diff and tape, the top of the diff cover and tape. So it doesn't get spark and welding spatter all over it. And, uh, 
Then I grabbed the three eighths plate and prepped it, threw it on top and started burning it in. I know more than put about five welds on this thing and the diff cut, the tape on the diff cover catches on fire. <laughs> Winning. I was like, that's why I put the tape on there. Well, that wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> I didn't have a blanket to throw over the diff, like over that part of the diff. I was like, whatever it is what it is. So I, uh, I finished burning that plate in and got that done. And then while I was waiting for it to cool down so I could throw some paint on it, I went ahead and trimmed the bumper an inch more on the sides, trimmed the header panel, trimmed the fenders, trimmed the quarter panels, got all that done. Then the top plate was cooled down to the touch so I could throw some black paint on it real quick so it wouldn't rust up completely. You're supposed to put the spray paint on when it's still warm, and that's red it was warm. powder coat. It was like 80 degrees. Yeah, when you bake the paint on, that's mm-hmm. like hillbilly powder coat. Bro. Perfect. Yep. Unfortunately, there was no like matte or satin black paint at the shop. It was just gloss black. Ooh. So the top of the truss is gloss black. <laughs> I was like, whatever, better better than oxidation and rust. Mm-hmm. So uh, I went ahead and sprayed that down, got that all done, and then took it back to the house. Now, when I got to the shop to put that on, I was like, cool. The lockers are plumbed, kicked them both on, crawled up a rock pile. I was like, yeah, that's badass. Shut them back off, pulled back in the back, took it back home. Next morning, uh, or no, that was not the end of the night. I took it back to the house. It's now 10 o'clock and went inside, fixed myself some dinner about 10, 30, 11 o'clock ish, getting done with that and went out to the garage and I had to polish three more super singles because the guy was coming to pick them up. Uh-huh. Yep. Got to make that money to pay for that trip. You do have to do that. So went out in the garage, polished those out, finished that up about 1230. Went inside, caught a shower, went to bed. Nice. Got back up at seven ish. Mm-hmm. So it was like one to seven, something like that. And uh, woke up and took Chris sending me a text message. Where are you at? Mm-hmm. It, it was a picture of him standing next to Josh Wolf. Mm-hmm. Josh Wolf was in the in the Dodge. He's like, Where are you at? I was like, <laughs> uh, in bed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I was asleep. Thank you. Yep. And, uh, so I do that and uh, I'm like, nope, I'm still in bed. I'm not, I'm not moving yet. It was, I was, it was a long day yesterday. Mm-hmm. I'm over it. And so I got up, got the uh, super singles ready to go. The guy shows up. Okay. You're going to like this. I have to tell you this part of the story. Okay. The guy shows up to pick up these super singles. You've seen a super single for a semi. Uh huh. It's a 14 inch wide wheel, 22 and a half inches tall. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. With a 40 inch by 15 and a half inch wide semi tire mounted on it. Yep. He shows up to pick these up in a lifted F-250. And I'm looking at that going. Dude, I ain't loading these motherfuckers. I'm like, <laughs> I don't see why. I don't see the problem. Like, the fuck that. Uh, I'll roll them out of the garage and uh, you figure yeah, it out. Uh, here's your shit. Thanks uh, for yeah. stopping by. I'm going in the house to eat yeah, breakfast. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> no, he. Uh, he showed up and I looked at him. I'm like, uh, it's a short bed F-250. I was like, where are you planning on putting these? He's like, oh, they'll fit in the bed. Like, oh, so you know how to do this? All right, <laughs> good. I'm going to be in the house. Thanks. I wanted to say that, but he didn't haggle on the price or nothing. Walked up, handed me an envelope full of money and was like, all right. And then started rolling tires out. It's like, all right, cool. We'll, that'll work. We'll load it up. So we went out there, laid it on it, laid each tire on its side and just hoisted it up in there and the slid it on the tailgate it yeah. wasn't terrible uh-huh. yeah it sounds great it wasn't terrible well when a guy hands you a stack of money you just get the tires in the bed well, my back you make hurts. sure he gets the hell out my back hurts thinking about it <laughs> that one my back didn't need too bad but uh we got those loaded up got him out of there then i grabbed the jeep brought it around pulled it, put it in the driveway grabbed the trailer backed it up to the jeep and then proceed to load the jeep and then as i'm loading the jeep up it uh it had to drive over the fenders mm-hmm. get on the trailer yep I was in two wheel drive and I was like, oh, I'll just, uh, I went to go pull up and it spun a rear tire, hit that rear locker button, went to pull up, compressor kicked on, compressor stayed on. Mm-hmm. Then I started smelling 80, 90 weight in the interior. Mm-hmm. That sucks. I was that like, happens. fuck. So for those of you that don't understand what's going on, my diff is vented into the interior and the locker is blowing air into the diff. Blew out the passenger seal on the nine inch, like on the axle seal, 
So it's pushing pushing fluid out the passenger side. Mm-hmm. And the locker doesn't engage at all. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that sucked. Minor details. Mm, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I feel like that's a major detail. Mm. <laughs> your, your lockers you just I mean, plumb don't work. The thing is, like, if you had to pick an issue to have... Knowing like what I, I know now, I wouldn't pick that one, but like hindsight looking back, like, yes, didn't slow you down much, sure didn't. So, like, did it slow me down any? I would maybe, say maybe, a, maybe a little bit, maybe one hit, but yeah, that's I might have I mean. got, I might have got on the second hit instead of the third hit, mm-hmm. but I mean, a little more skinny pedal. Yep, really, my balls are if thing you I had to have one locked and one open, that's the way I'd have it with the front locked and the yeah. rear open. I Will mean, you? oh, yeah. Because I think the front locker is going to pull you over stuff instead of yeah just spinning open in mm-hmm. the front. So I'll tell you what, I used the front locker I think five times this weekend. Mm-hmm. The rear locker I didn't use at all, obviously, and I got denied on nothing that I wanted to eat up. Yep. So that's what I mean. I'm blown away. I had no idea that your lockers were that useless. I spent all those doll hairs. Could have just put open carriers back in it and sent it. Now you did also like <laughs> asterisk by that. You did wield the Badlands. So yeah. like, and that's interesting. You know, I've always liked the Badlands. I'm like, oh, it's got the Corey. Like, there's some pretty gnarly stuff in the Corey. And, and there is looking at it now. I'm like, watching some of the other videos online. Like, I just watched the newest Flex Fox and Rollovers where he broke his axle or he broke the Jeepster in 60 seconds. Have mm-hmm. you seen that? No, I didn't watch it. But have you seen it posted up or whatever? Mm-hmm. And I'm watching um, the dude from Rockstar Garage in Gridlock try to get up this Little Caesars trail. Yep. And just not a 46 inch Pro XS tires. Yep. And a supercharger. Yep. And he's just on the struggle bus trying to get up this thing. Yep. Like that's a badass trail. Uh huh. That's what I mean. Like, like yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Do you pull that in like on forties and half ton axles and be like, no, no, thanks. You don't. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's interesting. I'd like to go try it. I'd like to see how far I could get a bit. Oh, we can go try it. Yeah. I'm not going to beat on it like a bouncer. So. Well, there's no <laughs> good way to look at that then. <laughs> I wonder how low those guys go in air pressure. I don't know. I was at three all weekend and I think it was. I was at five and seven. And it was pretty nice. Three would have been even better. Yep. But yeah, no, it was good. It was real good. That was my Friday and Saturday morning. So took her off the trip, got over there. I didn't, once I put it on the trailer and the locker was not working, everything about being in a hurry went out the window. I was like, I'm not in a hurry anymore. I'll be there when I be there. See, I don't, everybody was like, we heard that. Yeah. And then everybody's like, well, just tell him to get the fuck over here. We got like 25 people standing around. <laughs> like we could surely either look at it or fucking send it. You uh-huh. know, like. I just stopped being in a hurry. Like I stopped being like um, having anxiety about like, oh, I got to get all this stuff together and get over there immediately. It's mm-hmm. like, nope, nope, I'm not going to. I mean, I wasn't dilly dallying, but I wasn't like yeah. rushing. No, anymore. I get it. Yep. And so then I finally got over there and it was good. It was a good weekend. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It was cool meeting all the new people. It was indeed. So your Friday. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> so I got some <laughs> random guy show up at my work. Mm-hmm. An orange Jeep on the trailer. Yeah. So I got to talk to how'd him that, for a little bit. How'd that go? That didn't go bad. <laughs> was that one of your truck guys? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Is that one of your truck You guys going mudding this weekend? Jesus no, Christ. we're not going mudding. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that yours. Okay, I did. Yeah, well, I got called out. So I <laughs> wasn't getting called a bitch twice. So <laughs> um, we'll get to that. <laughs> So, uh, I came home from work Friday. I left a little bit early because I didn't get shit done Saturday. Jesus. Thursday. Yeah. So, I came home, had to. The biggest thing was, um, yeah, I think the biggest thing was fill the diffs with fluid. And um, I had to zip tie my radio wire because I just ran that. I just need to zip tie it up out of the way. The radio? Yeah, for my VHF radio. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to put the front fenders on, which those take four bolts a piece and the hood, which takes two bolts and two pins. put the two pins in. So nice. that's about all I had to do. Load it on the trailer and I was going to roll out. 
So I get home, I back up to the trailer to get the trailer hooked up so I can pull out and then drive it on the trailer in about 15, 20 minutes. Was this the remote with the C-Class? No. So I just pull it out on the road and then back the camper up to okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Rather than backing up mm-hmm. in the driveway and side of the house and shit. Yeah. So I was going to hook up to it, load it, and then just back the old camper right up to it, hook it and book it. Nice. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I looked over as I'm walking to the trailer because I had to put my hitch in my truck. And I'm like, boy, there was not a puddle under that when I left for work this morning. Under the rig? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And uh, it was like, yeah. Oh, it was like a two foot circle. Like, that's a big, that's like an extra large pizza. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was not a small little drip puddle. Oh, Jesus. So I'm like, the fuck? this thing literally pissed itself <laughs> in the like nine <laughs> hours since I left. This <laughs> Shit's morning. getting real. It's got anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> so where the fuck's that coming from? Yeah. All right. It's coolant. It's coming from the front of the engine. Okay, cool. Well, is it like a hose leaking or what? You know, whatever. Uh huh. Water pump. <laughs> okay. Well, never. Literally, this MFR has sat in the garage and not moved yes. since Oklahoma. Like, yep. Period. Never dripped a drip. Not a drop on the fucking water pump. Yep. And then it literally, it was like drip, 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 like just pissing itself. You literally shut it off in the perfect spot. I guess. Huh. Fuck. So I, and I had pulled it out the night before. So Mm -hmm. Thursday night it left, it pulled out the garage and was sitting there overnight. Yeah. So I said the F word a lot. (laughs) It was bad. I was fucking <laughs> furious. I was just livid. These are things I didn't know. I had no idea you changed the water pump until like a half hour ago. So I, I of course, I've got Chris like, where are you at? You on the road yet? What are you yeah, doing? And I'm just you. like ignoring him. <laughs> then I get a, I think I had also got a couple texts from Rick and I'm like, where are you at? What are you doing? And I sent him a text and I said, water pump's fucked. Like, would you change it or would you run it? And he's like. I got leaking water or freeze plugs and I drove six hours. So <laughs> I said, all right, fair enough. Fuck it. I'm not going to change it. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. So I start putting diff oil or, you know, diff fluid in the, in the diffs. And I'm like, God, I'm going to be so like, I'm already pissed. Yeah. But I'm going to be next level pissed. If this water pump just starts pouring Gushing. fucking cooling out. this weekend. Keep it. Yeah. Like I'm gonna, lo- <laughs> I'm losing my shit right now. Yeah, I'm done gonna find it and lose it again, if it if that happens. And I said, you know what? I said it ain't gonna take me that long to get this fucking thing done. No, so I said, not an LS. So pump. I sent the, uh, I called the old Napa, and I sent the wife out to get a water pump, and I started pulling the water pump off. So I had a water pump off, new brand new water pump, brand new gaskets, not reman. Not reman because you know when you need it, you need it, and they yeah. had it. So thanks. <laughs> uh, so it was like a two hundred dollar fucking Ooh, child water pump. Yeah, it was great. I know these weekend the trips are expensive. Yep. So I had to. I did a water pump. I had to change the coolant temp sensor fitting mm-hmm. on the head, and then I filled the fluid with or filled the filled the fluid with diffs. Filled the diffs with fluid. Mm-hmm. Got all that done, threw the sheet metal on it, fired it up, didn't have any leaks or anything, topped off the coolant, um, zip tied my shit up, threw it all in, and just like threw all my tools in a bag. And then, but see, I still hadn't packed. Luckily, my wife carried the team. Yeah. I had all the like coolers and, you know, light tower for the, Saw that. the Milwaukee light tower. Mm-hmm. That was all nice. my radios and shit, my drone stuff, all that camera stuff, and you know, all that shit was already packed mm-hmm. and sitting by the front door. So she was loading all that in the camper while I was cussing at a water pump. So all I had to do was pack some clothes, and I felt like a teenager, like packing to go to your buddy's place for the weekend. Cause I'm just <laughs> like, usually I'll lay all my shit out on the bed, I'll fold all my shirts and pants and everything real nice and stack it all in the bag. Dude, I was grabbing shirts and hoodies and jeans and like, I'm just stuffing shit in a bag. I'm like, I don't give a <laughs> fuck, just put it in there. And I'm like, let's go. So I'm doing all that. I make uh one last walk through the garage and uh that was about it. 
Yeah, and you're packed it, up, ready to roll. She's put it on the trailer and, left. and was about two and a half hours late getting to the Badlands from when I thought I was going to be there. So what time did I put you there? Oh, I don't know. 8.39-ish. It's not terrible. We on stopped at three gas stations on the way there. Three gas stations. Yeah, I needed to top off the fuel in the buggy, mm-hmm. fill the gas can up. So I did that. Was going to grab a Red Bull. Yep. A couple Red Bulls. Forgot. Forgot. Went to McDonald's, got food, mm-hmm. waited for food. Yeah. Then Worst went forever. across the street to another gas station to get Red Bulls. And then, then we were on the way. Yeah. Uh, where was the third gas station? Across the street. Oh, okay. Well, it was a gas station, McDonald's, and a gas station. Gotcha. So th- two gas stations and McDonald's, three stops. <laughs> three stops and a one hour trip. Yeah. And literally <laughs> one hour trip. So I needed my Red Bull. Yeah, it's, well, it's understandable. Came in handy. Yep. So that was my Friday. Wasn't bad, but fuck. I know. Looking back, you're like, oh, it wasn't that bad. No. But then you're like, oh, yeah. It's annoying. Yep. Got a new water pump on it now. Yeah, well, apparently, it doesn't, do a whole apparently it doesn't like coolant, no nope. matter what. It doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> like being cool. It's not very cool. It's a hot rod. That's it's a for hot sure. rod. Yeah. <laughs> Did you recap? Yeah, you kind of recapped your weekend a little bit. So I mean, a little bit. Basically, my issues were cooling. Cooling. Gear. My, Gearing, my gauge peaks out at 240, mm. and it spent most of its time there. Pigged. Ugh. Jesus. Yeah, it was uh That's ridiculous. It was a gym. So I'm gonna say that you need a shroud. I'm going I think that to... a shroud will cover you. But then again, so we we're having this conversation while we were sitting there on the rocks and you were moving stuff around. And I said, while well, you were down getting turned spun around so you could get up on that ledge for the pictures. Mm-hmm. And I said that uh I was like, What's well, got eleven hundred CFM fan on it? And Kyle Mang seemed to think that uh the stock like XJ mechanical fan kicked out more cfm than that i, I don't know I don't and i don't know. know either so do you need two of those little fans Durali fit makes a shrouded fan that i believe i got the measurements for um i'm gonna measure that and see if it'll fit it's a mm-hmm. shrouded fan two-speed fan puts out 2200 cfm you just really need honestly you only need about a half inch gap off that radiator mm-hmm. to get the draw but if you could get like a two inch gap at the bottom i don't know if that would make it different i don't know if that would make a difference or not mm. but you definitely need a shroud 100 mm-hmm. percent. that's my game plan if you can get something that sits right flat against that radiator almost but mm-hmm. has a shroud on it would certainly help yeah i'm gonna go to a two-speed fan are you going to put a different thermostat in it i don't know i have no idea what stock thermostat for that would be um take the Oh, stock thermostat? Yeah, because the water one pump five. came with a new thermostat and everything. So, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, How does that work? So loaded. that's all one piece? Mm-hmm. I guess I'm not familiar with the LS. It's a water pump, and then thermostat goes in, thermostat housing was on it. Oh, no shit. Comes with all that. Well, let's pull that. I would imagine stock would be 195. That's my guess. Okay. My Jeep was running at 210 all weekend, mm-hmm. but I had my temp gun with me, mm-hmm. and I would... Uh, because I was having this problem the other day. So before we left, the Thursday, Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday, my cousin stopped by. My cousin Jerry stopped by Thursday after like evening with his head gasket check kit. So mm-hmm. it checks for um, CO2 gas or for carbon, was it carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide, something. Mm-hmm. Checks for exhaust gases in your coolant. Okay. So it's a little blue dye that goes in a little thing, a little... um suction guy it's kind of fancy you put that on the radiator you pop the radiator cap fire the jeep up let it run you put that on there and then you you know you squish this thing and it pulls the it pulls the gases out of the radiator through that blue fluid if it turns green you've got exhaust gases in your coolant okay head gasket cracked head something yeah right and uh it was running hot just bumming around out there like i wasn't doing anything I was like, I'm pretty sure this thing has a 160 degree thermostat in it. I'm fairly certain that's what I put in that fucker. Mm-hmm. And it's running 210, 220. And I'm not doing anything. I'm literally just putting around. Yep. Not, you know, up and down the country road, you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, something's wrong. He comes by. We check that thing just for like five minutes. We're just sitting there messing with it. He's like, if it doesn't turn green by now, he's like, you're it's not probably fine. Yeah. And you remember how fucking hot it was. We took it out in February, mm-hmm. or in March. We overheated that thing sitting on the trailer. Yep. And uh, so I took and I was like, I don't get it. I was like, 
well, I got a, I was like, somewhere around here, I got a temp gun. So I found my temp gun. We had it sitting and running. I checked the, um, I checked the therm, the thermostat housing that has the coolant sensor in it. I checked the thermostat housing and the thermostat housing was 150. I was like, huh. And so all weekend long, while I was out there bumming around, it'd get nice and hot and be sitting there like the 210 mark. Yep. Hop the hood, pull it, check the uh, temp sensor, 155. Hmm. Like 163, 158. Okay. Like always. I was like, all right. So apparently my temperature sensor or my gauge is busted. Something is not, something's reading wrong. So I got, I picked up a new temp sensor from Napa, but I haven't put it in yet. Check that and see if that one. I'm yeah, going to throw, it, I'm gonna throw it in there and start there. Yeah. Yep. And if it is the cluster, I'll either locate a new cluster that is fully functional or something. But uh, yeah. So my coolant seems to be good. Seems you're running nicely. Mine's not. It was blown out. Yours the, is angry. The overflow all Makes weekend. Me, we had that thing when I came out, when you guys were standing on the road in March and I came out there and that thing was just smoke, just rolling out the fender. Mm-hmm. Makes me wonder how hot it really was because it was pegged. Mm-hmm. The needle was just broke off pegged, mm-hmm. but it didn't really start smoking until I was walking down the driveway to you guys. Mm-hmm. Like that's when I saw the smoke really start pouring out. And then when I shut it off, then it just started belching. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it wasn't just at like two thirty, two forty. I don't know. Mine was pegged at two forty all weekend. So I'm sure it was yeah. hotter than two forty all weekend. <laughs> God, that's terrible. It was bad. So bad. <laughs> that's not good. Nope. I don't like it. Well, I'm you know going to do a is? compression test. On you know what the good news see is? What happens. You would have never known that if it was sitting in the garage. I do. Yeah, I do know that. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, I mean, it did good otherwise than that. I'm surprised it didn't do that down at, at uh, Mid-America. Me as well. Hmm. Because it was warmer then. Yep. And you drove it all over. Yep. Huh. I mean, I wasn't following anybody. I was out in the open down there kind of thing. So I wasn't, right. I mean, it's, I wasn't really doing any trail riding. It was more like golf karting. But I feel like you, oh, well, so you were like cruising. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that had a lot to do with it. But I mean, I wasn't like in trails where you're, you know, on and off the throttle, you know, mm-hmm. steer a lot, stopping a lot, you know, brakes. Trying to climb a hill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was it then. So. Because yeah, if you're just cruising around, you're actually letting some air thro- flow through that radiator. Yep. Hmm. Oh, and you know what? Hmm. What thermostat was in it before? The other one. You think it's just OE also? I don't know because I've no, I'm pretty sure I've changed it before, but I, yeah. I don't know. wonder if it was a cooler thermostat then too. Could be. If you had like a 180 in it before, you swapped it out, you're to 180, 195 now, you're 15 degrees closer to being hot all mm-hmm. the time. Very intriguing. It is interesting. Uh, so I got that to fix. I also had some, I had two coil codes that would come and go all hmm. fucking weekend huh. so it basically would just drop out two cylinders i would love to know and i'm betting we've got some listeners that can tell you mm-hmm. i would love to know why it was spark knocking so hard because it was dropping two cylinders out and you think that's why it's spark knocking mm-hmm. really yeah yep go ahead plug two spark pissed. plugs and see what happens it was pissed yep well, it was hot for one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It was it's hot pushing, as balls. Pushing coolant and, out for one. And no sparks. So it's got a cylinder that just has fuel, air, two and of, hotness. Two of them. Yeah. Two dead holes. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're probably right. It probably was just literally just hot cylinders, fuel, and kaboomy. Mm-hmm. Sucks. So we got that. Yeah. We need to get that figured out. Um, I had to adjust my preload on my front shocks a little bit on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. To get those to ride a little bit more, more better, but I'm happy with where they're at. So you need to diag your motor. Yep. Get that tightened up. Yep. Um, what, anything else? If it weren't for the motor and maybe a set of gears, I think that you're going to, depending on how you want to wheel that thing. Bouncer life. I know you say bouncer life, but like how much gear do you need for bouncer life? Oh, like if you put five thirty eights in it, is it too slow, or do you just shove it in second gear and give her the wit the rip? Well, here's my thought on it. Um, if you go with a five thirteen, yeah, when are you going to notice a difference versus a five thirty eight? You're not. You're going to notice it at slow speeds while you're trying to do torquey. Yeah, stuff. yeah, get up stuff right. The other time when you like go fast stuff like. How fast do you want to go? Yeah. You know? Right. And how fast, how fast is, 
I don't know, in low range, in low range with a 3 gear, what is your top speed in, th- in direct drive at, you know, 4,000 RPM, 5,000 RPM, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's probably a move. I don't know, but it's fast enough. 55, 60? That's what I mean. Like, I'm not driving the son bitch on the highway. Right. So, in low range. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. So, that's why I'm going yeah. with 538s. I like it. I like it because it's going to give you some range you can use. If you feel that your 538s are too short of a gear ratio, then you just shift, into, shift high. into high range. Yep. Yeah. And give her the beans. And put the fucking pedal to the metal. Yeah. And let that supercharger sing. Shit. You going to pay for it? <laughs> no, I'm hoping the Patreons will help out. <laughs> We're going to need a couple more of you to buy a Whipple. <laughs> But that would be nice. First giveaway, Whipple. Yeah. <laughs> Ian, how'd you oh, win? Ian won it. Now I'm gone. And sorry, boys. Thanks for pl- thanks for paying and playing. Um, yeah. So my goal is to do a compression test, make sure nothing's blowed up. Yeah. I like Hopefully that. nothing's blowed up. It's a good start. If it's not blowed up, I'm going to start diagging the coil code issue. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look into this. I got to measure the shroud for this single single fan shroud. That's a two speed. So like 2200 at max whip ass and mm-hmm. then it drops down to whatever. I like it on low speed. Um, What's that sucker going to set you back? Five hundo? That's like 250 bucks. That's not bad. Yeah. No, it's not horrible. Mm-hmm. My fan was a hundo. Yeah. Well, so, the fan that's on it was like a hundred and something, and the other fan right. that I had on it was like a hundred and something. So, so I've got yeah. two like one run <laughs> Durali fans <laughs> sitting there. If anybody's interested, if anybody needs a fan, because I ran one for Oklahoma and then was like, I'm going to upgrade to a little bit bigger fan, and then I yeah. just didn't go big enough apparently. So uh, I think it's just a shroud. Well, I, I think really that's, that's just one of the yeah, you know, dingers of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, you can't pull. You can't pull through a, how big is that? 10 inch? 12. 12. Mm-hmm. You can't pull a 12 inch hole through a full size radiator and expect to cool the whole thing down. Yeah. You can actually see that with um, my semi. Mm-hmm. On the semi, if you're just cruising down the road, it'll warm up. You hit that fan and kick that fan on, dude, it'll pull so much air through that shroud like through that fan with that shroud that mm-hmm. it'll pull that tent back down. Even though you're already cruising at 60 miles an hour, that fan will pull that air through their fast, you know, yep. faster than faster it can. Faster than you can push yep. it through. Yep. Yep. So, um, so those are, that's what you're going to do to fix it. Yep. That's what your plan is for now. Anyway. Yep. So you are going to get gears at some point in the near future uh, before the, the next run. You think the winter plans are yeah. gears front and rear. You think if you get this engine lined out and get it run right, you want to make you want to take it for another run on four tens? Nope. No. I'm so committed. We're done. Yeah. Locked her down for the for the fall season's done though. More than likely. Okay. Getting a new puppy in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Kind of want to take a break from it. Not thrash on it every day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. What do you think? Once a week. You still gonna keep one at the once a weekend? Yeah, I got a lot of little tiny little like put some rock lights on it, wire just that up, sh- and stuff. piddly shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but I want to take a break from putting myself under a deadline because I don't yeah. need to stress myself out with that and all the shit at work and all that. So, think I'm you just can have her? Kinda, you think you can have her put back together for the first of the year? That's my goal. Think so? Is around there? I yeah. like that. Use my time off and Maybe kinda, we can set up a run. Yep. Because let's be honest, like putting gears in a fourteen bolt should take like a day and then. So. Yeah. And that's working quite slow. You get a lot of uh, practice with it now. Yeah. Well, 14 bolts, in my opinion, are one of the easiest axles, if not right. the easiest to set up because you have no uh, carrier shims. Yeah. So and you, did, you spent so much time trying to get that front one right. Oh, I yeah. feel like you I should do it by eyes closed and asleep. Exactly. So, I feel like you have enough experience now where you're like, well, this will be easy. Yeah. To redo a, a proper set of gears. Yeah. Especially if you switch carriers at the same I'm going time. With spools too. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it all. Damn it, boy. Yep. I figure instead gonna get, of I'm going to get the complete package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple. There's a couple that know. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to get the complete the gear complete package package. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do spools, 538s, new bearings, all the whole nine yards. Is that going to come with a sticker? Did you hear Fuck. anything back about that? I don't feel like I got, I don't feel like I got, I feel like I got shoved to the corner when I asked that question. You probably did. Okay. 
I want. You sit over there and I think, shut I up. think I got told I don't get any Yukon stickers until I get a, a complete off-road sticker on it. Mm. I want the other logo. And I, he he didn't seem like that was going to be a thing. What other logo? So there's a logo I use on the YouTube channel every time. Okay. And I really like it. It's a black and white logo for complete off-road. Okay. I don't know what it is. Okay. I just I just prefer it. I like it. We can inquire. I tried to. Well, we'll just inquire again. Uh, yeah, my plan is to do gears in the front and the rear, a cam, lifters, valve springs, cooling, yeah. tuning, done. And that's your, oh, you want to do all that before you go back out? Yeah. Oh, damn. I mean, pretty much. Yes. You want to do the whole shebang, just get her in and get it done. Mm. So you're going to check compression, make sure the engine's not hurt. Yes. And then do if valve that's, training. If I, if I have a positive test <laughs> on the compression test, mm -hmm. I will be happy. Yeah. Because then I can just put a cam, lifters, valve springs, get this, get, tune it and be done. Yeah. I think I would start. fix my cooling, which needs fixed either way. Right. And then put gears in it. If I have to buy a new motor, I'll be pissed. You will be pissed because you just sold one. I did. <laughs> um yeah you probably but, get it back what do you do yeah i bet you talk about it it only cost me <laughs> uh, i'm gonna get a snap right, i'm gonna get a snapchat later oh, that God. has a reference to you're that, definitely so. gonna get a snapchat when he hears that thank you well we know when josh listens because we get snapchats <laughs> especially if we say his name um anyway uh yeah so let's slide into, let's talk more about rear steer. Whoa. Oh, that's not where I thought you were going. <laughs> I don't think that was it. I don't think that's where I was going. I did some. For rear. me or you? Well, I mean, do you need rear steer? Wouldn't hurt. There we go. So okay. I'm not going to so say it's for I me a, or you. But I need double high nines. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Steering, double yep. steering high nines. This is great. This shouldn't cost me more than, I don't know, the cheap and the tow rig's worth. I priced out my rear steer setup today. What well, uh, rear steer setup? Yeah. What do you, why don't you need that? When you're See, 134 just, inches long, bro. You need, I mean, I get it. I'm tired. I've, I kept asking, like, we were doing a little trail ride there, and there's probably seven or eight of us in this line. And uh, Derek was leading us. And I kept, like, we'd come to a corner and I'd have to three point it. I'm like, Derek, did you have to three point that corner? And he's like, well, I walked it first. Otherwise, yeah. I probably would have. And I'm like, okay. Well, I had to four point it, so <laughs> so I mean, I feel a little better, but still, what the fuck? I you think. Know? Well, okay, so a lot of that has to do with your double being locked on both ends. Yeah, but there were times where I, was, I pulled up to that and just cruised around it. Like there was no nothing. To well, that. there was also times where I was running in two wheel drive, mm -hmm. and it helps. But a little you're still bit, locked. But, yeah, but I can turn no problem. But you're still it's locked. not. It's not pushing it. It's more of the if so? I cut it hard mm -hmm. and turn. I, Wait, were you in two-wheel drive front wheel? No, rear. See, you should have drove around in front. Well, I'd like Let to try just that. drag you around, Yeah, maybe. The other thing is, once I get the sliders on and the exo done, I can, as soon as you clear it with the front tire, you can Bump bash it. the slider yeah. on the tree and use it to pivot. Because um, I do that with the tire. If I needed to turn left, I'd grab that inside tree with the tire, and it would kind of turn it a little bit, too. I know you were a but, little disgruntled about your front axle. Uh, prior to this trip, you were just, I don't know. There were some things and I was asking about it. You're like, fuck that front axle. You yeah, just weren't, you were seduced. Very, How do you feel about it now? I don't hate it. I feel like it's a weak point at some point, but I have to get to that point. Why you know do you I mean? think it's a weak point or what, what stock about the axle? inner C's? They're okay. plated, plated, uh, plated stock knuckles. Yeah. And non keyed high steer. Non. Oh, okay. So, in my opinion, You're the afraid. first time it's going to break, that front axle is going to break. Mm -hmm. It's going to snap. Hopefully, this is my hopefully, it's going to snap the high steer bolts and just shear them off. You think so? They're grade eight, so hopefully they just clean shear them off. You think? Otherwise, and it's going to snap the top. And what's of the that going to take? You being in full bouncer mode? I don't. One hard hit to the tire while yeah. you're moving and, and snap them off. Okay. Anytime you put so a shock load that's on the common. steering, yeah, okay. So mine's welded on. So well, <laughs> yeah. Then you just snap top just of the nut. the knuckle. You just snap the top of the knuckle. <laughs> which I've also seen that too. Yeah, where guys will snap the top of the knuckle off. I'll be angry. Oh, bro, recovery on that is not fun. I'm sure. No, 
No, you put the title on the hood. Fuck. I, don't know, I can't afford that. <laughs> so it doesn't have a title. <laughs> that's my that's my thought is that the keyless high steer and the now what is that? So you need a knuckle for that then? Yeah. Okay, so you'd have to buy like aftermarket knuckles. You buy an aftermarket knuckle, and then they just have Machine that like keyway, key yeah. so it sets in there, Jesus. and then kind of spreads the load and makes it stronger. Yeah. So when it pushes against the bolt, it also has to push against that keyway. Yes. Okay. Because right now I'm just on the sheer strength of four grade eight bolts. So you so. could. What would you have to change if you wanted to change that knuckle? Just the knuckle. Just the knuckle. Okay. So knuckle it's not and a, high steer on. It's not a terrible upgrade. No, but then you're running a on grand. a uh, stock inner C. Does that make you nervous with it plated? The inner C is not plated. Oh, I thought you said it was plated. The knuckles are plated. The knuckles are plated. Could yeah. you plate the inner C? I've seen guys gusset onto them, but the problem is I can only do that on the bottom because of how my truss is. My truss runs from C to C. So, so then shouldn't it be pl- kind of? It's yes, kind of. Yeah. It's still just it a close. stock inner C, but right. I think you got to do a lot of work to fuck up a stock inner C. So I'm not really worried about that. Yeah, you're not in that kind of bounce. I'm just yet. worried you're either going to snap the top of the knuckle off or you're just going to, best case scenario, you shear the bolts. Yeah. And then you got to drill and easy out the bolts. <laughs> Do you a, have that in your toolkit? I, I have a fucking <laughs> bag of bolts, but I don't have the drill and the easy out, which is, you know, a good thing to probably put in there. <laughs> um, you are not wrong about that. So that that's my thought is mm-hmm. the keyless high steer is going to be the problem of your front of the front. So if you were to consider a rear steer, would you move that axle to the rear? Nope. Okay, you would actually put a new one in the rear and just keep that one up front for now. Yeah, because by the time you take that one. Mm-hmm. Move it to the rear. The truss is going to be back bass long. backwards. So really, yeah, huh? Because your link mounts are going to be on the wrong side. Do you? Oh, and on top of that, now you have an offset rear pumpkin. You wouldn't want that exactly. So yep. that makes yeah. sense. So, so I would just leave yeah. that one there because at the end of the day, you could. Upgrade to some aftermarket knuckles. Build your own again? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So you wouldn't buy a whole new housing. You would just buy all the outer. Would you buy Big Bell shit? No. You wouldn't? No. That's intriguing. Yeah. I figured you would just buy the Big Bell outers and just tat, just glue them on and call it a day. Nope. No. So you would go with Too what? Too much money. 450, 550 knuckles? Um, outers? Okay. So this is what I, this is my research that. I did today. Okay. I started out wanting to buy a new housing from someone and I <laughs> I'm went, gonna, I'm going to guess roads. God. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, man, that's a good price. But like, <laughs> <laughs> your shit doesn't run right. You're looking at yeah. Axles. Oh yeah. Well, I was so fucking pissed off at everything else. So what do you look at? Shiny <laughs> bling bling. Right. Um, but if it steered better, I'd be less upset about it. Not if running. I had right. rear steer. <laughs> um, yeah. This is the creep mode. I love it. So, well, I had already looked at cams. I already know what cam I'm putting in it anyway. Okay. So I'd already looked at You'd that. Already done all I already looked at the shroud. And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck else do I look at? Oh yeah, rear steer. That was the other <laughs> thing. I'm like, man, that would be nice to have. Like, definitely not a necessity or yeah. a quick. Like, I'm doing it's this next expensive. week. But uh, it's definitely would be nice. So I started out like that, and then mm-hmm. I'm like, mm, okay, well, cool. And then I'm like, um, I could just do what I did last time and build it myself. Yeah. I would just use different C's and knuckles. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I already got solid hubs, um, hubs from solid machine. Oh, really? Yeah. On the you front. have a spare. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I already had the, or I run in those. So I would just run those again because uh-huh. I like those. They look cool. Yeah. Um, I would like to go to the super duty unit bearings, mm-hmm. but like, oh, yeah. Does it make sense to do that on one half of the rig? Probably not. Mm, maybe for now. Seeing as how you kind of know that you want to move that direction on the front. But I just don't know if like what I have mm. works, you know what I mean? Like I, if I was to redo the front axle, I would do it with super duty. Okay. Unit bearings. So you just answered your own question, but if you redid the front axle, you'd go to super duty unit bearings. So yeah, but it's if, also a bigger expense to go to that. So if you bought keyed knuckles, you would buy them for a super duty unit bearing. Am but I then wrong? I'd have to buy super duty unit bearings for like 250 bucks a side. But am I wrong? Are you going to buy keyed knuckles for your current solid things? Or are you going to make the upgrade then and just do it? It would depend on the money. I feel like this is a buy once cry once. 
Yeah, this is buy once. I'm broke twice, you know. Well, I, I mean, I get that today, but next year, no. You know what I mean? No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But So I went at it kind of like, well, yeah. I could put what I have. I got a price yeah. put together for what you have to build what I have okay. up front and the rear. How'd that hurt? They're not bad. Not bad? No. More than gears. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely more than gears. Yeah. Uh, not as a few, <laughs> few, few, few thousand dollars more Ooh. than gears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you price out the rear steer setup to make it do the side to side? Oh yeah. It's only like 2,100 bucks. Who's that from? Bust and uncle. Oh really? Electro hydro. Yeah. Set up. I'm not going to run two pumps. Matt bought his from kryptonite. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. they have a, so it's basically up. like a joystick. Yep. Um, and it has a override button. So it has automatic return to center. Mm-hmm. You have an override button. So you push the button and then it doesn't automatically return to center. Um, it's all electronic. It's all in a waterproof fuse block, standalone, nice. mm-hmm. compact, easy to mount. And <laughs> it's a healthy chunk. All that. Yeah. Between everything. Two grand. What are you, for what, that. where were you going to get the knuckles from? Just probably just crane. Some- Oh, really? Yeah. They sell the Super D Knuckles? They sell all kinds of 14-bolt Knuckles. Mm -hmm. Super Duty, the Magnum style, the big bastards, Mm -hmm. and then just like regular 14-bolt. I'll be darn. Regular 60 Knuckles. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. But they're all keyed, and I think they're they're either five or six bolt Knuckles, too, for the high steer arm instead of just four. I think Mm -hmm. it might be six, but I'm pretty sure they're at least five. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's a lot of fun. Let's move to talking about, we're already an hour into this shindig. Yes. Let's move to talking about the event. Okay. Uh, what was your highlight of the weekend? Um, it's a tough toss up for me. You didn't have one thing that kind of sticks out as like, Oh, that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, one of the highlights for me was being able to Sunday. Uh-huh. I started getting kind of retar- like special <laughs> and just right. Sending so it. I found a Red Bull in the cooler <laughs> in <laughs> yeah. the middle of the day. Well, towards the end of the day. Yeah. And I decided to open this Red Bull and like need a little pick me up. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, cool. So I don't know if that like instantly sucked into the bloodstream or what, but I was in like a good mood. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, Whoop. is this when we're taking pictures? This is right before we were taking pictures. Okay. And that's when you're busting around the yeah. the sand lot. Yep. Uh-huh. So I was like, let's see if this thing will go a little faster up this rock wall that we walked up yesterday. <laughs> and it did. Well, let's see if it goes a little faster up this rock wall. And it did. Nice. The one I like spot that. I went up and I just like because I'd walked up it, I think, two or three times yesterday, Saturday. And then so Sunday, I'm like. Dude, I'm just going to roll up in this motherfucker and just stand on it and let it eat. Yes. So it did. Catherine was holding on to the shit bar, the mm-hmm. shit handle. And I was like, boy, that climbed a lot better than yesterday. And she was kind of like, had that look. And I'm like, I don't think you were in here for that one yesterday, were you? And she's like, <laughs> nope. And I'm like, oh, I bet that was scarier than shit. And she's like, no, not at all. I'm like, oh, oh, dear God, I love you. Oh, like, <laughs> like, fuck yeah. She's like, why yes. would I be scared? And I'm like, I would have been scared. Right. Some guy just r- 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 right up, up the hill. And like, yeah, all right, then we yeah. just did that, you know, yes, but. Sir. It so after I did all that, and then we were taking you were taking your fancy pictures, like mm-hmm. real nice kind of stage pictures for the the podcast stuff. It was nice to stand back and look at it and go, "There it is, yep, there it is." Nothing's by that time usually after it you get kind of dumb. You were like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, that drive shaft was hitting this, or this yeah. was hitting that, yeah. or this is a little wobbly and making a dunk 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 sound, mm-hmm. or you know, there's always something that's like gone. I don't want to say wrong, but like mm-hmm. something broken or something about to break, or you're like, "Ooh, I got to be really careful because this is about to just grenade." Yeah. Nope. Nope. I mean, other than the overheating and the dropping a couple cylinders with the coil codes. Yeah. Which could be shitty connection on the coil wires on right. the ECM. Could be um, shitty plug connection on the coil. Could be a shitty coil. Could be a shitty plug wire. Could be a right. shitty plug. Like. Of all the things. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Literally could be a fucking spark plug. It's not something so, that you touched this recently. Yeah. So, so. I, I'm, I don't, not to say it's not an issue, but I'm not really concerned with it. 
So as long as the motor's not blown up. So you're excited that it does go fast stuff. Yeah. Well, and that's where I was like, "Mm, gears need it. Mm, More power cam need it because the buggy can has handled what it had. And it was kind of just like, yeah, what's up? I think you need to do your compression test. Do your plug, do your full tune up on it. Try and get it on all its cylinders. Once you get on, on all cylinders, back that fucker out in the street into a burnout. If it'll turn the back tires over in high range, mm-hmm. you've made substantial gains. Oh, over you'd what drive you down the street and you'd notice. Because yeah, I, I drove down Because that fucker I, didn't want to pull itself around in yeah, high gear. I pulled it off the trailer last for the other night, whatever. Yeah. And then just fucking shit stomped it down the road. Mm-hmm. Let the neighbors know that I was in low, home. In low side? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean. It ran okay. It wasn't great, but did I mean, it you could tell that it was cold off the trailer than it did when it was warmed up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So there's a big difference yeah, there, definitely. Okay, so yeah, but still lacking. Yeah, you think? Well, the problem is, anytime I would get it bound up, it would just yeah, you know. So, yeah, when you get up on that hill and just look, went on that back wall, you get up on that back wall and it just stopped, just well, sitting against the converter. So when I rolled up on that ledge, uh-huh. it was already pegged at two forty. Yeah, it was hot so as it balls. was hot as yeah. fuck. And the trans it, it had the too. coil codes on it, so it was just a bad scenario. But is the like, trans code is the trans cooler in the back? Yep. Okay, so the trans probably wasn't hot. No, I, I mean that thing kept kicking on, and it but it would kick. I don't remember the temp range that it kicks yeah. off, but it would kick on and run for a little bit, and then kick off. But I mean, like it, it wouldn't run. Oh really? my gosh, the trans cooler is running all mm-hmm. day long. So you like, don't have a temp gauge on that? No, I don't. Yeah, we were. I was worried when you put it up on the wall and you had it just sitting there and it just didn't want to turn the tires over just sitting there mm-hmm. against it i was like man you are cooking that converter yeah but if you get that big ass co- cooler back there yeah it's got a okay. fucking big ass fan mm-hmm. on that and it's still not easy on parts no but when you're just sitting against a converter like that but so uh, i just think it was a lack of power because that yeah. ls should have more ass than that it should definitely yeah and after talking to mike yeah i agree um so that was your kind of your highlight was the go fasties. Uh, the the highlight was being able to kind of beat the shit out of it. Yeah. And my highlight was genuinely different. know that it wasn't broken yeah. or going to break from my, that. My rig highlight was just the fact that I didn't need the lockers very much. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool. I was pretty excited about that. But the highlight, the thing that sticks out to me that excited me probably the most of the weekend was when I got back to camp Saturday night. And as I'm rolling in, so everybody had took off ahead of me and I went back to say bye to Bill because Bill and Dennis were were loading up or, to leave out. Yep. And uh, I turned around, went back to them and everybody else went to camp. So everybody was there already when I got there mm-hmm. and I come rolling up and not even everybody was in the same camp. Yep. And I didn't know where everybody else was at. And that kind of sucked. I didn't know that Mitch was off in that far corner mm-hmm. and I didn't know that Kevin Ramirez and Rob and those guys were over across the way i wish i had known that they were across the street i would have ventured out to those two camps to go say hey to them Mm -hmm. um but uh but i rolled back up and i kind of made a little lap around and i came and turned around and came back and to see all those rigs and all those tents and know that all those people were there because of us Mm -hmm. that was awesome to me I and, that, that and the chili cook off yeah that i was, was like cool. dude this this is exactly why i just wanted to start a podcast let me show you this picture 20 people 21 yeah 21 rigs not including spouses yeah, not including riders. extra peoples yep kyle mang who didn't bring his ouch damn that hurt <laughs> talk, talk <laughs> shit get hit bro he done table whoop jazz here's the here's the cool picture for me Oh, that's bad. Is that from the drone? Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Have you posted this yet? There's one of them. I no, got, I don't care about your low battery. But... Oh, dude, that's cool. Man, I wish we'd have had everybody in that picture. Yeah, we were missing the rental razor. Yep. We were missing the defender. And we were missing Mike Grove. The defender. Josh and Sarah. Oh, yeah. I always forget that thing's called a defender. Yes. And we were missing more than that. We were missing to, uh, Kevin Ramirez and all the those guys. Where the hell were they? I thought they were they in were this broke. picture. Oh. They were broke down that still. That is right. Mm-hmm. We're missing a couple, a few of the XJ guys. So we had more than, how many rigs in that picture? 15. And then the two rental, or the rental razor. Yeah. The defender. Uh-huh. Growy. Growy. And then. He'd already taken off for the day, I believe. And then we had. And then I think three more were broke. Yeah. At the well, camp. That, two or three. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because Rick's was down. Of the camp. Rick's was down. Uh-huh. 
Uh, Kevin's was down. Was I don't know. If, was Kevin's? Kevin's wasn't down, was it? I thought was it Kevin's. It was I don't remember who broke the axle. I don't remember either. I forget. I don't think it wasn't Kevin. Dude, I was. I was. But that fucking, whole group of XJs was hung up out there by the quarry. Yeah. By the just off the ravine there. I was um, talking to. I don't remember who I was talking. I was talking to somebody, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Who's that?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's so and so." And then they walk over, and he's like, oh, "I was talking to Mike." He's like, "Who's that?" And I was like, "Oh, that's whoever." And he's like, "It calls him by that name." And he's yeah. like, "No, I'm whoever." And I'm like, "Damn, I thought you were that guy." Like, <laughs> fucking hey, I'm terrible with names, but like, uh, oh, it's it's uh, hard when you meet like 15, 15, 20 new people at once. Yeah, yes. there was a couple of guys over there hanging out in the with the XJ group. Um, one of them was uh, the Rob that drives that black two door with the nine, the dual, the nine inch in the front. Oh, God, that thing's badass. Yes. I want my front axle to look like that. Well, it could for the right money. I spent too much money on this one. Well, you got to build another one. I like it. Do I build another nine inch or do I build? T- oh, Jesus. I know, huh? No, there's not <laughs> even a question. Nine inch all the way, right? <laughs> no. Nine inch with super duty outers. Jesus Christ. Well, well it's basically the same thing. It's like we're having a 60 front rear. We're closing it down. That's the <laughs> dumbest thing we could ever come up to think. And so thanks what? for tuning in. That was great. It was a great idea. Uh, Tons. Did you have any of Lincoln's coffee? Nope. Lincoln made coffee Sunday morning. Well, you sure the fuck didn't bring me any. No, it was. Uh, thanks, Lincoln. Appreciate you. Some kind of gearhead coffee. Oh, good stuff. Probably. That's pretty good. Yeah, Jay, good. He built the uh, brood right there on the, oh, on the really? campfire. Oh, uh-huh. Good. Glad yeah. he could share that with me. With the scottle. Appreciate you. Did Mike share any of his coffee with you? Nope. Made yeah, it right in the guy. fucking camper kitchen. Yeah. Sure as shit took it and ran. Dude, yep. it smelled really good. Oh, it smelled great when he left with it all. <sighs> yep. Um, Dick. Uh, Jeremy Kirschmer. Is it Kirschner? Kirschner. Kirschner. He's a Kirschner. chili cook-off winner. Yep. Did we say that? He won with the deer chili. I know. I think the only reason he won... The only reason he won was is because the, the the damn nope was because the brisket chili ran out. Is that what it was? I heard the brisket chili was freaking <laughs> Did you not have tasty. Any? No, it was Get gone. It here. was gone by the time I got oh, there. Oh man! And then like the next four people after me were like, "Oh, brisket chili! I've been hearing nothing but good stuff about this brisket." And oh, I'm like, "Yeah, man. but it's gone." No, the brisket. So chili that's what legit. I mean. Like, I couldn't vote for the brisket chili because it didn't have the brisket chili. They were both super. So legit. sorry about you. They were both super legit. Uh, Patty's spicy chili was good. I did not have that one. You didn't have that one? Not a huge fan of spicy. Yeah. But it I wasn't also like terribly spicy, but I it had to eat like two like, okay, I'm not good with portion control. Yeah. So I had two big ass bowls. I had a big ass bowl of the venison uh-huh. chili and then a big ass bowl of the white yeah, chicken chili. Yeah, white chicken chili was fire Well, too. I'd never even heard of white chili. Oh, or really? Chicken chili. Never, mm. never even heard of it. Uh, so I'm like, well, I got to try that. That, I tried the venison one first because it was just about cash. So mm-hmm. I had a big ass bowl of that and then a big ass bowl of this chicken chili. And then I'm like, had a cornbread muffin. Yes, and then I was sir. like, a cornbread muffin? Yeah. Where'd you get a muffin? From my wife. Oh. She made a whole bag of muffins. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they were sitting on the table. Oh, I missed that. She I even had, had the, a little bear of honey. I had the honey, the, the jalapeno uh, cornbread from Corn Fred Off Road. Mm-hmm. Cornbread Off Road. Yep. Yeah. Corn, Those guys. Corn fed. Cornbread. Off- Cornbread off road. We're gonna change it for him. <laughs> Appreciate you. We'll take some royalties corn, off of that. Cornbread from Cornfed. Um, yeah. So and then I got done with that. And I was like, shit. I'm kind of full. Yeah. But what do you? Yeah, do? I was full. I had six bowls. Yep. Six. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at all surprised. Yeah, I had uh, 63 bowls of chicken. <laughs> like an asshole probably burned for the next like. It's probably still I, burning. I only did small portions. I did like a third of the, a third of a bowl. Yeah, like I didn't see, get crazy. I fucking with it. filled her well, up. because I wanted to try each of them. Well, that would have been a good idea. And I didn't put any fixings on any of them. Oh, I see, ate them I'd, straight. I had fixed them up. See, nope, I didn't fix them up. I, I think ate, I just put chili and cheese on both. Of I them. wanted. I wanted. It to be fair, I put chili and cheese, I put cheese and crackers, cheese and crackers on them. Yeah, I think the the chicken, the white chicken chili, mm-hmm. would have been good with some like tortilla mm, pieces, like so, yeah, something like that. Kind of get top. that little tortilla. You could have thrown some it. corn. You could have thrown some Fritos on it. I'd already ate the bowl of, of mm-hmm. chili by the time I got there. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna you're like, yeah, that, get that recipe, and we're gonna try it out. Uh, Matt's ex used to make some. Banging Bombing. chicken white, oh, white chicken chili. I never even heard of Dude, that. She made it with bacon in it. 
mm. and like a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't know. It was fire. Yeah, that was it was uh, that white chicken chili. I will definitely eat that again. That uh-huh. was That's good stuff. Fire. Um, and then we had cake. My wife got a yeah, big ass had piece of off road podcast cake. She uh, drove, let's see, probably 35, 40 minutes each way to get that cake for us mm-hmm. from her favorite bakery. Really? Yep. Wow. That's why it was good. Local bakery. Really? Who was it? It was up in Gibson City. I don't oh, know where nice. it was or who it is. I don't remember off the top of my head, but. Who brought us the beers? Dustin. Nice. Mr. Toyota. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. He wanted to downplay his Toyota the whole time. Did he? Yeah, Why? I was like, oh, it's my Toyota on Leaf Springs, and I'm like, bro, that thing's fucking pimp. I fucking love it. He started messaging me a couple weeks ago. We were messaging back for He lives in Greenup. Did you know that? Yep. Dude. I knew like, him before this trip. Oh, really? Yeah. He just lives right down the road. I sold those 39.5s oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or my old 39.5s. You knew him before these pod- this podcast. Yes. Yes. And I didn't know so that. So I had, he had hit me up to buy those, sold yeah. them to him at work one day. Uh-huh. Because they actually rent shit from us every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, he was telling us that too. Um. So then he comes in one other day and they're like, they hit me up on the radio and they're like, yeah, there's a guy up here looking for you. And I'm like, fuck, like, <laughs> this is never good. And it was him. And I was like, it took like a second because I'd only met him the one time. I talked to him a few times on Facebook and mm-hmm. shit, um, but I'd only seen him mm-hmm. once. And I'm like, dude, I don't have a fucking clue who this guy mm-hmm. is. Like, I'm like, no fucking clue who this guy is. But yeah. like, it's, he starts the conversation and I'm just like rolling with it, having a conversation. And then we talk, you know, bullshitting about some wheeling and stuff like that. And then he walks out and I'm like, I'm like, who's that? I was like, I don't have a clue. <laughs> and then like a couple of minutes went by and I was like, I know who that is. And you're like, damn it. And I just feel like a dick. But man, right, it's going to be a better conversation. Yeah, if you'd I was just kind of like, you know, have, but see, like, it's not the first time somebody, there was one time I, I had my shit on a trailer out front and some random guy stops Mm -hmm. and is like, who's like off road truck is that? I'm like, Oh my God. Like, why are you not that? that? I don't want to have that conversation, but like my coworkers are standing there and they already (laughs) think we're a bunch of mud truck idiot hillbillies. So I'm like, damn it. Mm -hmm. Like, here we go. Cool guy wants to stop and bullshit about my rig. And like, all I'm going to hear after What's this is like. take for somebody to stop? Walk into your work. Walk into a business. Into a business. Be like, who the fuck owns that? Yeah. <laughs> Takes a you know fucking back half XO Toyota Truggy on 40s, I guess. Yep. Yeah, that's what starts it. Yeah. So, yeah, Dustin's cool. We'd been messaging for a little bit. Then he sent me some pictures right after he painted the Toyota. I love it the was color. Gray right before, dude, he sent me the pictures. I'm like, I love it. Did you know how he start? Or did you hear the story of how he picked that color? His wife loves it. Yeah, <laughs> he just like random He's ass like, some hey, color. Yeah, my wife loves this color. I was like, it's because it's Tiffany blue. It's pimp. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. And he's all like, oh yeah, it's not a great job just with rattle can. I'm like looking at. It, I'm like, fuck, it looks like you sprayed it with a gun. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yep. Like, it looks killer. He needs to own up and own that shit because I think it looks is, banging, love it. dude. For rattle cannon in the yep. driveway one day, like, it looks damn good. Yep. And, uh, and that gray frame. That thing fucking worked, too. <laughs> like, everywhere he went was just like, <laughs> just leaf, yeah. dude, leaf sprung rigs. Leaf sprung Toyota, bro. I want to hate Done. on leaf springs so bad, but here's what it is Derek, leaf sprung. It works great. Yep. Mike, leaf sprung. It works great. You have, and then Dustin's leaf sprung works great. I'm sure I'm sure forgetting some other rigs, but it's like you look at it and you're like, they just work. Now, I will say I'm a little biased because mm-hmm. I've spent the money and drank the Kool Aid. Yes. I was following Dustin down the fire road. Yeah. It looked like a bumpy around. ride. <laughs> I was sitting back there pacing him and I'm like, it's not bad. That looks that looks bumpy. I'm not gonna lie, that looks bad for you right now. I was leading. I somehow I they the they took my took my ass and put me in the front of the line because yeah. that's a good idea. You like left I them. was driving and I'm like, I don't feel like I should be leading this group. We had like a damn. Um, I can't remember. I cannot fucking remember people's names to save yeah. my ass. Which one? Yeah, the Durango. His name is, is Nathan. Nathan. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm like I'm I'm pulling a Durango. I'm 32s behind me, like not like literally pulling, but like he's behind oh, yeah. in the line. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to walk over something, not even think about it. <laughs> and I'm going to look back in five minutes and go, 
Where'd he go? Well, there was nobody back there. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to take my time and, and I'm going to keep an eye on the mirror and shit and keep yeah. all. I think we had like four or five rigs. I at would that point. love to see your rig just flat out down that road. Well, and then and to so see what that feels like. Then we took because we were headed back to the quarry that time. So yeah. we get out on the road. I turn down the fire road and I just get going and right. I look back and I'm like, um, oh, they're way back there. <laughs> <laughs> Bouncing the fuck down the road. I'm like, yeah, my bad. We, when I first came into the park, when I was heading up there, uh, we came up that back way and saw the guys with the XJs and stuff there mm-hmm. by the ravine. And I come up the, uh, I come up there to the top of it, whatever. And I stopped because Mitch was there. And I was like, I pulled up. I knew it was Mitch. Saw him in his JK and knew the red bead locks, knew the rig immediately. Mm-hmm. Looked at him. was like, Hey, have I seen you on the internet on like Instagram or something? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm a, yeah. You've probably seen me on Instagram. I was like, boy, that rig looks familiar. And he's like, I'm here with you. I'm like, I'm aware. <laughs> he's like, I, he's I like, know it's, this. he's like, it's Mitch. I'm like, I know who you are. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I wish I was yeah. good with names. But Sarcasm wasn't. Well, I've been messaging with Mitch ugh. quite a bit. So yeah, I knew, I knew who that was immediately. And I was like excited to meet Mitch there. I was so excited that he came. So that was one of the people that I was really excited. Checking off the bucket list. Yeah, it was just one of the, you know, just one of those people that like we Snapchat quite a bit. And it's nice to put a face with a name right. that you get so interactive with, and yep. especially with our like insider pages and yeah. the Patreon group chat that we have. I should really stop adding things to the list. What? Like Snapchat, Patreon. I didn't even know we had a Snapchat until earlier today. So <laughs> it's a whole new level for me now. It's been up probing for like over a month. Yeah, uh, it's new for me. So I'll that have sucks. To- you missed out on Geo uh, grenading some more power tools. Jesus. Geo, uh, they will take a bunch of like old power tools and shit that they get a hold of. Mm-hmm. They'll go to garage sales and pick up old shit. And he'll take it to the shop and hook it up to the uh, 240 welder, stick welder. Jesus. And just kick the old welder on until she goes up in flames. Nice. <laughs> Seems like a good time. Nobody do, decided to add me to this party. They do it all the time. He used to do it a lot. He was doing it there for a while. He was doing like one every couple of hours. Geo, do it and send me a Snapchat <laughs> video. Thank you. Make my day. Yeah, he did He did a couple this week. He did, huh. he did a, I don't know if it was a Makita or what it was, but he did something earlier or he did something yesterday and it ran for like five minutes on 240 and you know what it burned up a brush a brush <laughs> it burned up he's like One he's brush. like i'm impressed that fucker ran for a long time what do they do when it burns up a brush screw a couple of bolts into it yep put a grade five in one side and a grade eight in the it. other they had some good ones back in the day that when they did that they would just kick on for like 30 seconds and then just ball of fire poof <laughs> jesus <laughs> You got to run them until the smoke comes out. If you don't get the smoke out, they're not clean to fuck. They don't like, give up you can't the throw ghost. them away. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there is a Google Drive link yes. that is pinned at the top of the Trail Riders page on Facebook. Yes. If you are on this run and have photographs, please, please, please post them up and share them. If you weren't on this run and would like to see everyone's photographs and videos, check it out. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. There's a lot in there. There's more to come. There's I know, I'm some waiting on YouTube Jordan. content that's supposed to be coming out too. Jordan took a ton of photos, and I'm waiting for her to up post them. them up. Yeah, yep. because she took a ton of videos. Yep. And I learned on how to not, if not, not she was literally with a drone. <laughs> so fucking pissed. <laughs> It is what it is, man. Hey, you got to learn how not to operate a drone before you've you only had it for a couple to, of days. Though. Yeah. Like, so I didn't know that you had to picture. And then if I, I figured I could like hit record and then like take a snapshot picture yeah. like while I'm flying and yeah. it keeps recording. Incorrect statement. Uh, so I flew probably 25 minutes of drone footage that had some pimp. Pretty like, cool from shit my, own, like I was the one flying it. So, uh-huh. of course, but like had some cool shit. Would have been awesome. And I forgot to hit the fucking record button. <sighs> it sucks. I was if you guys have um, videos, like you like was saying, if you guys got videos, please put them in that Google Drive. I'm going to try to snag a bunch of those. And if I can, I'm not good at this yet, but I'm going to try. I am going to try harder to stitch a video together of a bunch of clips from this weekend. So if you want your clips to be in there, try to get them on there this week sometime. That would be good YouTube content. I know. Take all those clips because as long as they're recorded in a certain, like 
as long as I have them, really. Yeah, as long it as you have them, it doesn't matter. I can stitch them all together, and then I'll throw them up on YouTube, and I will also throw it up on the Patreon page. Yep. Or not on the Patreon page, on the actual Trail Riders page. I'll, I may put it on Patreon page, but I'll put it on Trail Riders for sure. If you... I need to get the drone footage put up there, too, because yeah. I got some flyby drone stuff from when we all lined up and did a yeah. big group photo. But I thought that'd be kind of cool for some of the YouTube guys to have like a flyby intro of the rigs on this trip. And then yeah. boom. Oh my God. I got a YouTube video tonight too. Fuck. Ah, me. That happens. Um, anyway. <laughs> so check that out. Here's the most exciting thing from the entire weekend. I think. What is it? And I say this sarcastically because this is not an accurate statement, but oh. like this should excite people. Nugs. We had Badlands nugs. <laughs> Because do you really expect us coming. to go anywhere and not find fucking chicken nuggets? I am trying to figure out what is going on in this world. Nugs. Nugdom. Nugdom. Is becoming a thing. Nug life. Yes. Nug life is, is a thing now. Like mm-hmm. Badlands has never had nuggets. They got them now, baby. They, they, knew, them now. they knew the Total Off-Road Podcast like, were coming into town and we're like, get some fucking nuds up on here. Hurry up, get some nugs in. It was actually special on, on Saturday. It was yeah? only a special one. Fuck yeah, nuggets. it's because we were in a house. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what the nugget? What, what in the nugget? <laughs> what the nug? Um, and then I got, I got flamed because I didn't see it on the board. Mm-hmm. And I just got my normal cheeseburger and fries because they're so good. That place puts out a killer cheeseburger. It's probably some frozen ass patty. Yeah, but it's just the way they do it. The just- seasoning. Oh, God. Every time. So good. And the fries, dude. Oh, that place is. I don't even pack a lunch to go to the Badlands because of that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I got my cheeseburger and fries. I know more than order and step back from the window. And the girl at the other window pops open and she's like, 10 piece nug. I was like, the fuck she just say? And I don't remember who was standing with me. I think it was Lincoln. And he's like, did, did she just say nug? I was like, yeah. He's like, did you get nugs? I'm like, no. He's like, you passed on nugs. I was like, no, I didn't pass on nugs. I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah. He And he's he still not letting me live it down. If you're on the trail riders, you saw it today. He said, hashtag Steve hates nugs. <laughs> Dick. He did he, pass on nugs. Well, he was around Sunday when we showed up with nugs. Yeah, you did show up with nugs and like brisket, <laughs> barbecue brisket, fucking no, cheese they were, fries. They were pulled pork, messy fries, messy fries. Pulled is pork, a pile barbecue, of epicness. Yeah, it was pulled pork, barbecue, nacho cheese, and they're you know all stacked on top of a bed of their fries. Yeah, that was too much food. It was epic. I'm glad you ate at least a couple nugs. They were they were decent. Nugs. They were definitely not bad. They needed some Burger King buttermilk ranch. I know, but there. they were better than Burger King nugs. Oh yeah, they were. Yep, hands down, hands down. Probably even bordering on beating out Wendy's. Oh yeah, they beat Wendy's. Beat Wendy's too. Yeah, yep. I'd agree. Damn, I would rather eat those than a Wendy's. Nugget. I think you're right because there's so much some, meat. Some good thick ranch. They had a lot of meat. Oh yeah, good good crunch. They had ranch. Meat. I didn't get any. I think uh, Kyle got some. Fuck. Thanks, Kyle. I'm a, used I'm a, a naked nut ranch. guy, man. Just no no sauce. I like certain things naked and nugs aren't one of them. I'm going to post on. Okay, so uh, real quick before we slide into the last call. JCR and their new. You're just butthurt about this. I am butthurt about this. Go get a fucking container and screw it to your door panel and call it a nug holster. Nug holster. (laughs) And fucking done. I'm going to do it. Kyle. Kyle. We are looking directly at you. (laughs) Mango. We need to start looking into 3D printing some kind of nug assistant. I want to, I want to, here's my thing with the, whatever the fuck you just said, nug holster. I watched the video. <laughs> the nug I pocket. could give about 13 fucks less. That's why I'm surprised you're triggered as much because yeah. the video I saw looked like this holy basket mm-hmm. screwed to your door panel and they're pouring nuggets. sauce on it. And I'm I like, think- the sauce is going to run all over the damn door panel. I That's think fucking I'm mostly, ignorant. I think I'm mostly upset because it was full of nuggets and it wasn't on my door panel. I feel you, but like <laughs> piss poor design. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> Who in the fuck wants to wash their door panel from <laughs> nugget sauce? No. Hell no. <laughs> no. Who pours sauce on nuggets in the pocket? Uh, any normal American would no. sauce their nuggets. Clearly nuggets are meant to be dipped. 
I would agree with that. But okay. See, there's somewhere around in that vehicle. You didn't see it, but somewhere in that vehicle, there's a dip holder. Okay. So here's where I'm going. Uh huh. It needs to be a universal one size fits none nug holster. <laughs> you take the box of nugs, slide it in. Uh huh. Then follow along here, killed children. Has a separate compartment. You put your sauce cup. I like it. I feel like so. The, yes. You can be driving. One hand yeah, on, on the, the wheel, wheel, grabs nug, Dips dunks nug. nug, eats nug. Yes. See, I two feel Two sauce like, yeah. minimum. Two sauce minimum. Yeah, you got to have two sauces holster. in the holster. And we need a holster to be able to fit all of the nug sauce yeah. containers. I want to fit like a, like a McDonald's nug box. Or, I want to fit yeah. like a Wendy's, Burger King, Ooh. Chick-fil-A. It's going to be tough. Dude, it's, a, it's out there. It's got to be it's done. It's going to be the nug holster. Mango. Or the nug caddy. Manga. Oh, Nug Caddy. Yes. Like the remote boat, but for nugs. <laughs> Patent that shit and just kick me a free one we need, when somebody makes we one. We need you guys to come up with a good name. Nug Caddy's pretty good. I feel like, like there's something else. Nug Nest. The nest of all your <laughs> nugdom. <laughs> the nug Nest. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, anyway. you joke about this, but some rich jackass is making these <laughs> and is on an island with tropical drinks. Yeah. A millionaire now. Eating nugs. Yeah, because he sold that shit on Shark Tank or something. <laughs> Let's I wrap this it. mother lover up. We got to go into the last call. Do it. The last call. What are we drinking? I don't know. It says Santo. Santo. Um, something's oldest Texas is craft oldest craft beer. Did this come from, uh, Shell Bay? I believe it did. <sighs> hmm. Well, it looks good. It's a black Kolsch style beer and the can is hard to read. So I'm not going to read the rest of the crap. Uh, 12 hand, uh, handcrafted 12 ounces does not tell me how many, how many percentages it does not. It was canned last December. Getting old. Ready? Bush. If I don't, like, start pouring. <laughs> Should make you wait for it. Bush. I would have just kept going. I thought, I kind of thought a black Kolsch might be darker than this. I did figure it would be a little darker than that. It does have some black tinge to it. I mean, it. it's darker, but it's not dark it's not stout dark it's not stout dark but then again i mean it's a kolsch so it's almost root beer dark yeah it's got that kind of brownie black mm -hmm. vibe going on all right i got you a beer thanks appreciate you boo -boo. you're welcome Let's see how it is how is it on the nose delicious it smells like beer beer <laughs> cheers that's pretty good beer Cheers to us going wheeling. We went wheeling for the first time together with these rigs. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, I like that. That is a good beer. Thanks, Shelby. You do things well sometimes. <laughs> Every now and again, you get it right. Just when you've gone and done the dumbest shit. <laughs> totally redeem yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I could drink that. Yep, that's a good one. Amen. Okay. What's in last call? You got anything on your notes? Nope. What are you going to talk about? Wheeling. Um, I was going to ask you something earlier. I don't remember what it was now. Okay. Cool um, story, bro. Yeah, it's my life. In a I would like to just take a second and say thank you to everyone who came out for the event. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Um, it makes me want to do more things like that. Oh, for sure. It makes me want to continue doing this it makes me want to continue coming up with cool merchandise ideas and giveaway ideas and stuff like that to right. give back for your continued support of the pad every hit. week mm -hmm. yep. yeah so oh uh last week we shattered our daily downloads both tuesday and <coughs> friday that's pretty cool yeah that's intense so I would also like to thank Josh and Sarah 
with Wolf Fabworks yeah. for coming out and doing some merch stuff. That was cool. I would also like to thank Chris with Complete Off-Road for coming out, doing some merch stuff. 563-583-5363. And last and not least, Mr. Fred and Mr. Rick from Crawler Off-Road for yep. popping a few people's cherries on buying shit out of the back of a pickup truck from a guy. <laughs> <laughs> they were over there slinging deals on fair leads, ropes, kinetic ropes. That was cool. I actually got to use my first kinetic rope this weekend. Oh, yeah, you did? Yep. How was that? It was less than exciting. Really? It was boring. You didn't give it much pull, though. It didn't? That, you should have been that's in That's what spot. I mean. That's Mike's what spot. I mean by boring. Yeah. So I get ready to pull on this thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like going and I'm like, oh, shit, this is a kinetic rope, not a recovery strap. Uh So I can fucking punch it. So about the time I get to like (laughs) right on the throttle and I feel that little jerk, Uh he's already out. And I was like, damn it. Like, I did the same thing. Super smooth, though. Uh, When. So we had to pull out. You had to pull out, Rick. I had to pull out Fred when Fred tried to follow you. Dude, I swallowed it. that 43 in that mud Dude, hole. Dude, and he put them 40s and just buried he it. He dug her in there. Dude, that thing had mud up over the hood. Like, oh, yeah. The in, Did you see the engine? Oh, yeah. It was just mud brown. The oh, whole yeah. Thing. The LS was just nothing was but mud. gorgeous. I was like, oh, my God. So uh, I went to pull him out backwards, and I'm like, well, I don't want to, like, beat on their gears in reverse, but uh, so I'm going to get some running go at it. And I felt the rope snug up on the rope on the because he was down in the pit. And so the rope came up and was like across the dirt. Yep. As I was backing up and I felt it snug up on there. I'm like, is that it? And then I kept like, as it's still going, I kind of felt the all of a sudden tug on it. And I just started laying into that throttle. And here you come. Just fuck, yep. pulled him back pulled out. Pulled him right up. Yep. And he was like, he was using that front diff as a shovel. So it was stuck. Yeah. I had shit like packed up on the <laughs> right fucking diff from that hole. I want to know what was playing in there. Probably nothing. Dude. Probably not. Because you had to be I had 43s buried. Buried. So I probably made it through if I had a little more horsepower. I just want to know what rig is going through that. So. Curious. Changing topics. Okay. We got mail. You got mail. From whom? We got mail this week. From whom? I'm just going to throw this swag out there. Here it is. Boom. (gasps) What is this? Boom. Nice. Rad designs. That's awesome. So we got hooked up here, I don't know, a week or two or three or seven ago Uh and uh, got a message from a guy. Yes. Okay. Rory Desjardin. Yeah. Okay. He owns Rad Designs. Really? Um, How did I not know that Rory was on the own that Rad Designs? And this is who makes the, the rail shifter, right? Yes. Yeah. So I didn't know that. I've talked to him a mm-hmm. little bit back and forth about some shifter stuff. He's on the Trail Riders um, page. He's on the Trail Riders page. He's active in there. And he is on the queue for a future episode oh, to talk about nice. shifter stuff. So he's like, man, if I had an address, we would definitely get some stickers out there. Not a problem. So guess what we got? Stickers. Well, I mean, did and you get koozies? You got a sticker. See. And then a koozie. Uh-huh. And I told you he was going to send us stickers. C. It's because he sent us one more. <gasps> Are you ready for this? Oh, I'm looking at it. I'm going to need you to read what this sticker says. It's upside down. I can't read yes. it. I can't read what it's like this. It says. <laughs> does it say. Making shifting great again. Yes. Uh huh. So it's a hashtag. Hashtag. That's his hashtag. Making shifting great. Again. Making shifting great again. Yes. <laughs> Pimp. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, he sent us some uh, Making Mm. Shifting Great Again stickers (laughs) and uh, the old Rad Designs logo sticker. Uh, And a koozie. Because, fuck yeah. I'm putting this shit on my rig. Yep. So, make sure you check them out. Rad Designs. We're going to have Rory on here in a few weeks or so, whatever. We're going to do a midweek with him? Uh, We can do a whole podcast and a midweek with him. Okay. I don't care. We got Mm. all the opportunities in the world here, buddy. I know a guy with a podcast. Do no one. So... (laughs) Stay tuned for that. Um, I was not happy with my B&M shifter this weekend either. Really? Yeah. What's the holdup? Um, I did spend quite a bit of time mm-hmm. adjusting it in the garage prior mm-hmm. to this trip. And 
it just has a lot of play between the gears, man. Hmm. So I would find myself dropping it into second gear instead of, you know, drive drive. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's up against the gate and you could just kind of, if you bumped it real hard when you hit that gate, yeah. you know, click it in a second. Really? Yep. Hmm. Is who, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have to look into, I've already explored trying to get a rad, uh, designs. I think it's the VX shifter for free. I was told that's not going to happen. <laughs> Well, you got to (laughs) try. I mean, shit. If you don't try, you never know, right? I wonder if I told him I'd review one on for the podcast, but he'd have to give me one to review on the podcast. Uh He wasn't. He wasn't having. He said, "Yeah, you can buy one. You can review it for the podcast." And I was like, "Well, that didn't work how I hoped it would." (laughs) So uh, now they are badass shifters because I did get to play with. uh, uh, God, that was going to sound bad. Um, I got to use the shifter in Shelby's buggy Mm -hmm. not buggy jeep but it's a buggy but like not his not voodoo child the other one uh the one he's got now and uh that's where i was that was the first time i'd ever seen one and i'm like what the fuck is this space shuttle looking shifter mcgoober thing Uh uh-huh and yeah it's completely adjustable with your gates and detents on left and right side it's pretty badass Hmm. and i like that so there you go so which one are you going to get? I think it isn't the VX. Is that what it is? I don't know. I'm just jumping on his website now to kind of bum around the <sighs> VX four shifter. Yes. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. Oh, cause it's like the gates are like pins. Yeah. And you can adjust them based oh, on wow. how, how much throw you want between each one and Jesus. left and right. So you can push it to the right and the left and pretty much customize it for however you want to drive it. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty fucking sweet. So Corey O'Malley sent me a Snapchat earlier of him shifting. I wonder I wonder if he was using the winters. They do have he does sell winter shifters also. This I one says it's not stocking it anymore. I know they're on his website. Whether yeah. he sells them, I mean they are winter shifters are badass. I feel like it was. But the VX is just I think it's the creme know. de la creme of yeah. shifters. Yep. And I am unhappy with my B&M, so. Well, that, well, that VX, with the adjustability of it, yep. like it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't. I like it. So, fitting with my buy once, cry twice buggy build, mm-hmm. it might happen soon. It's definitely not at the highest priority at the moment, because if I have to, like, make sure that I'm in drive versus second gear, like, it's annoying as shit, but, like, manageable. Yeah. So it's not a high priority for me now, but it's one of those like if I had a spare couple hundred bucks, I would buy one because I would like to upgrade from my B&M that's got cut gates and all that. So, yeah, there's been a, there was a couple times this week. I'm like, do I need to be like ready to shift this thing into reverse really quickly? I'm like, yeah. how shitty is that going to be with a factory shifter? It's going to suck. It's not going to be easy. No, like like yeah. mine. I can. I've got the gates cut on my B&M so I can slam that bitch right to forward reverse. and it goes to reverse. Mm hmm. So I'm not worried about that. What I just don't like is being in second and not drive. Because when you're trying to rock crawl something and you pop it into drive versus second, it's like doesn't yeah. go like you think it should. Because mm-hmm. still in second goes, year. but it doesn't go like it think it should. Yeah. And you never know when that could be critical. Mm-hmm. So I don't like that. Agreed. But like I said, it's more of a creature comfort than a necessity because i already have a shifter but Mm -hmm. like if i was looking to replace one yeah but i do believe he can make the vx shifter work in your factory location for your shifter i believe i think it was kyle ming was talking to him about that on a post somewhere so Hmm. inquire within for more info but he will be on the podcast soon so keep an eye out for that that uh that was our mail call mail call nobody else sent us anything cool Mm -hmm. losers my wife is posting pictures of my child yes it's a baby is that the cutest thing ever he's pretty contently happy right there i would say i'll snuggle up warm in his warm outfit yeah it's probably it's cold as shit outside cutest face ever Redamn ridiculous. 
Three damn tickets. Oh, that's it. That's all you got? Next week, I will report back with uh, compression test findings on the podcast. I'm sure they will be posted on the Trail Riders page. They'll definitely be dropped in the Patreon chat thread. Messenger chat thing. We got what will? My compression test results. Oh, that's good. I like to post there first. Yeah, that would be good. Let them know what's up with my life. Mm-hmm. For those folks you should be that sharing give a shit, you know. Uh-huh. So, I'm going to go do that very quickly. You're going to go, not tonight. Maybe. I I, it's the I'll go with it's you. the not knowing, but I really I need know. to go to bed. <laughs> but I'll help you. It'll uh, wake you up if we go on that nice chill. Yeah, and, and then I'll just be up all night is the problem. Mm. But so I don't know. But you'll know. Realistically, I would but like to know. wash it first because it's effing dirty. But you'll know. I know, but it's dirty. <laughs> I uh, my game plan is to wash it tomorrow night. I Where? have a heated. Here? Yeah, I'm gonna wash it in the driveway. Really? Why not? I don't know. It's fucking dirty. Runs out of the street. Not my problem. All right. That's what the street sweeper guy gets paid to fix. This is true. Um, but yeah, we got a pressure washer trailer that I'm going to bring home. <laughs> so you should just drag it to work and wash it in the wash bay. Well, then I got to hook the trailer up and then I got to put on trailer. Or just drag it. I really out. want to weigh it. So it might happen. Yeah. I think you should. You yeah. should live it. Live weigh it. Yeah, live weigh it. It's a lot of on work. On the trail rider page. It's what a lot of work. No. Yeah. Because I can't um, just drive mine up there. I got to load the damn thing on a trailer and then fiddle fuck around. And, uh, yeah. <sighs> so I don't Thanks know. again to everybody that came out to the event. That Dude, was, I was stoked that we that had was, that many people. I was stoked that we had people show up. I had the thought <laughs> next time. I said, maybe, uh, and this is no promise or guarantee. Definitely, definitely not a money back guarantee. But um, I, I was thinking on the way home, I said, man, it would be kind of cool. If we did another or when we did. Yeah, that was a good idea. Oops. I don't know what you thought God. was going to happen there. <laughs> um, Seemingly, your prep skills for paint are just aren't that I great. bought the wrong kind of paint for the table is what happened. <laughs> I stuck the sticker on the table and it just peeled up all the paint. Yeah, it's fun. Um, <laughs> I had the idea. I was like, man, it would be kind of cool to get with our partners and do a little gift bag swag pack. Yeah. For the next run. Gift bag swag pack. Uh huh. That would be kind of cool. Uh-huh. Just just a little something something from everybody. Just a little something something. Nothing like ridiculously huge, yeah. but shirt stickers. Yeah. Maybe some accessories if they have some to share. <clears throat> that cough is getting you today. I know. Get the I'm dying. I might. You never know. catch it while we were over there. Shoot. I hope not. I hope not. Don't be giving that shit to me now. <sighs> it's lack of sleep. That sleep yeah, deprivation. Cold. Oh, the cold sucked. Yeah. Rainy the last two days. Mm-hmm. Um, with low key, I don't know when I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna <clears throat> pull it in the garage. Now it's washed. It's semi washed. I'm gonna run it to the car wash here in the next couple of days. I'm gonna run up there, run it up there some evening, and get it actually wash wash like power wash underneath. And mm-hmm. but I washed them. My biggest thing was you didn't the, hit any mud with it though. Yeah, well, you know, I did. I just I just rinsed off between mud holes. Mm-hmm. That's why it was so clean. You drove around the big mud hole. Yeah, well, you can't be getting your bougie self. I dirty. drove around the first one and got called a bitch. Uh, and then I said, I came up to, I was leading and I came up to the next one and I was like, you know what? Fuck them. I got your bitch. Yeah. So I drove that bitch in there and buried them 43s in there and let, thank God I could back out. But like, I, all I said when Rick pulled up behind me, I said, he's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, yeah, no, it gets deep quick. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So he goes in it. And he, yeah, that got deep pretty quick. And I'm like, yeah, the fuck yeah, it did. Dude, he had rocks in his, in his, like, like rocks, oh, like yeah. inch and a half, two inch rocks it was inside of the wheels. Sticky, gooey, deep ass mud. I hole. was like, what the fuck? And uh, he, he was able to back out. I'm glad I did not. Steve turned around it. Nope. Mike turned around it. I was like, no, I'm good. Fred no. said, get the fuck out the way. I'm going to hit it. Yeah. You guys are trying to get me to go in. I was like, oh, let, let Fred go in first. He's bigger than I am. It was a it was a matter of letting the f- mud just flow into oh, the floor pans. Geez, yep, excuses. I'm not doing it. Excuses. If I can avoid that, like I'm not doing it. No balls. 
Exactly. <laughs> I will take your the, no balls. Uh, the no peer problem. pressure doesn't work after the fact. Like you're <laughs> it didn't just work during the fact the either. Mud hole. Fred's just like, get the hell out of the way. I'll do it. Yeah. And yep. he, he he gives it the beans, jumps in there, throws a fan belt, sticks it like yep. 100, per, you know, gives it a 10 Rick on the was stick. was ballerining on the back bumper while I was holding his hand. Uh-huh. To yeah. To keep him from you, taking a mud bath. You, you and Rick were trying to. We're trying to get it hooked up. <sighs> then yeah. I pulled him back out and it was trying to overheat because it had no, it was sitting of running with no water pump. Then we had to blow out his air filter and wash off the engine well enough to get the, the belt back on. Then oh, to I, top I, I off, forgot about my belt problem. Oh yeah. Your yeah. Belt, yeah. I you smoked a belt. Then after he got done rinsing all that off and got all put back together, took up to took it up top and washed it so that he didn't have mud all over the engine. The clutch didn't work right the rest of the day. The clutch. Like the transmission, transmission. clutch. Mm-hmm. That's a manual? Yep. I did not know that. Yep, it's a manual. Wow. LS Probably swap. mud in the damn thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what he said. Yep, got mud got mud on the clutch and, yep. and just fried it. I was like, I never <sighs> thought about that for like going off-road with a manual. Getting mud I'm on sure the clutch. I'm sure it happens. Yeah, obviously. I wonder if you wash it and clean it real good. How if He said that back. they were going to, that he was thinking about, or they get home. Pull the transmission back, clean the clutch off. Um, he's like, I'm gonna inspect it. If it looks like a brand new clutch, I'll leave it. He's like, but if it doesn't, while I'm there, I'm gonna change it. Yep. I was like, that's not a bad idea. Nope. So he was gonna do that. Right on. But uh I am going to pull after I get Loki washed, I'm gonna pull in the garage and die start diagging that diff, that nine inch. If I can get that sorted relatively quickly, that'd be good. But I'm not gonna get in a big hurry. To try to get it fixed because honestly, I can drive it like it is. Mm-hmm. Quick question for those of you that are still listening that know about nine inches. When I pressed my bearings onto the axle, I pressed them all the way down to the axle uh, flange. Like the bearing sits right against the edge of the flange. Okay. okay? There's nothing between the <clears throat> bearing and the flange. Okay. The seal is already on there. It's and it's up on on top of that flange area and it seals against it. Then they snap together. The bearing and the seal snap together. Okay. When I put them in the housing, the seal does not sit all the way in the housing. It's like the bearing. It's like, I don't know. Is that why it's blowing air out of it then? Yeah. I think that's part of why it's leaking. But it's been that way forever. Like ever since I've owned that Jeep, the bearings have never, the seals have never slid all in. And I have two spacers on there because like the factory style retainer. That would hold it all together doesn't like it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't sit against it. It needed a spacer. Mm. I don't understand why that is. Mm. Something's not correct there. Mm. Yep. So I got to die. I got to figure that out. I got to figure out why it doesn't seal. Chris, call him and tell him the answer. Yeah. Or whoever else knows about nine inches. I know also Jake true. Terry knows about nines and there's a few other guys. Someone that are familiar. will inform you on your ill having ways yeah i didn't take a picture of it last time i put it together but i'm gonna be taking it apart here pretty quick anyway because i'm definitely gonna somebody i don't remember who it was now somebody recommended when i put it in and i put some rtv around the bearing before i slide it in and mm-hmm. i did and that held great up until i applied air to it mm-hmm. so that was a good call on their part Ten four. message me whoever it was because i forgot i'm sorry way to go that's me being a dick all right. You ready? Shut her down for you the shut week. Her down? Yep. Okay. Um, you guys go check us out. If you want to donate, go to patreon.com forward slash total off road podcast and check that out. And you can check us out on Instagram at total underscore off road underscore podcast. You can check out my personal page at low underscore K E E underscore X J and check out Ian's personal at off road underscore Ian. Our YouTube channel is total off road podcast. Our TikTok is total underscore off-road underscore podcast. And check out www.totaloffroadpodcast.com. If you need any parts or any kind of ropes, if you need if you need parts for your rig, call Chris at Complete Off-Road. If you need ropes, give Rick or Fred a shout over at Crawler Off-Road. Uh, go subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. I know that there are a bunch of you in the Trail Riders page that listen to this podcast that aren't subscribed. Just give me a subscribe on the YouTube channel. Smash the bell. Smash the bell. Uh, just subscribe there because we've got like a hundred and something subscribers. And I know there's a lot more of you than that. So 
I don't, I don't care if you watch the videos, just Wheeling subscribe. content coming soon. Let's hope. There you go. Yeah. Go subscribe now so that when we do post up new videos, you, you can get see them in your notification. See, it's not like I'm going to bombard you every day. You'll get one notification a week on average. Yep. Okay. Thanks for tuning in to episode 44 and we'll catch you on the trail. And I mean it literally. We cool. will catch you on the trail. It's it's happened. Yes. Thanks guys. Later.